forms, records, and publications. Overview. Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 14 CFR. Aviation-related regulations that have occurred from 1926-1966 are reflected in Figure 2-1. Just as aircraft continue to evolve with ever-improving technology, so do the regulations, publications, forms, and records required to design, build, and maintain them. 2-1 Historical background of 14 CFR parts 23, 25, 27, and 29. Event regulating agency rules and regulations. 1926 Air Commerce Act. Department of Commerce Aeronautics Branch. 1934 Consolidation of Functions. Bureau of Air Commerce. Bulletin 7. Bulletin 7. Civil Air Regulation Part 04. 1935 Cutting air crash. Car 04. Less than 12,500 pounds. Car 40 transport. 1938. Civil Aeronautics Act. Civil Aeronautics Administration. Car 4 smaller slash C. Car 4 larger slash C. 1946. First helicopter certified. Car 3 car 4 B. Car 4 80 greater than 12,500 pounds. Car part 6 rotor class. 1958. Federal Aviation Act. Federal Aviation Agency. Car 3 car 4 80 car 4 B. Part 6. Normal rotor craft 1956. Part 7. Transport road to craft greater than 6,000 pounds 1956. 1965. Codification of fires to fires. 1966. Agency becomes administration under DOT. Federal Aviation Administration. SR 422. Jets. SR 422A. SR 422B. Part 23, Part 25, Part 27, Part 29. Comment. Civil Aeronautics Manual. CANS contain both regulations and advisory material in the same document. Figure 2 1. Part historical background of aircraft airworthiness regulations. The Federal Aviation Administration FAR regulations that govern today's aircraft are found in Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 14 CFR. Figure 2-2. There are five volumes under Title 14, Aeronautics and Space. The first three volumes containing 75 active regulations address the Federal Aviation Administration. The fourth volume deals with the Office of the Secretary of the Department of Transportation, Aviation Proceedings, and Commercial Space Transportation, while the fifth volume addresses the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, and Air Transportation System Stabilization. These regulations can be separated into the following three categories. 1. Administrative 2. Airworthiness certification from E. Airworthiness operation. Since 1958, these rules have typically been referred to as FARs, short for Federal Aviation Regulations. However, another set of regulations, Title 48, is titled Federal Acquisitions Regulations, and this has led to confusion. 2 2. Title 49 Transportation. Congressional Act. Acts of Congress are public law, Code of Federal Regulations, CFR, 50 titles. Public law basis for Title 14 is PL 103 272. Title 14 Aeronautics and Space. 5 volumes, Volume 1. Chapter I Parts 1 and 59. Far. Dot. Volume 2. Chapter I Parts 60 and 109. Far. Dot. Volume 3. Chapter I Parts 110 and 199. Far. Dot. Volume 4. Chapter 2 Parts 200 and 399. Until the Sea of Secretary. Dot. Volume 5. Chapter B Parts 1200 and 1299. NASA. Subchapter A. Definitions and abbreviations. Parts 1, 3, 5. Subchapter B. Procedural Rules Parts 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Subchapter C. Aircraft Parts 21, 23, 25, 26, 27, 29, 31, 33, 34, 35, 36, 39, 43, 45, 47, 48, 49. Subchapter D. Airman Parts 60, 61, 63, 65, 67, 68. Subchapter E. Airspace Parts 71, 73, 75, 77. Subchapter F. Etra tilde C and General Operating Rules Parts 91, 93, 95, 97, 99, 101, 103, 105, 107. Subchapter G. Air Carriers and Operators Parts 110, 117, 119, 120, 121, 125, 129, 133, 135, 136, 137, 139. Subchapter H. Schools and other certificated agencies parts 141, 142, 145, 147. Subchapter I. Airports parts 150, 151, 152, 153, 155, 156, 157, 158, 161, 169. Subchapter J. Navigational facilities parts 170, 171. Subchapter K. Administrative Regulations Parts 183, 185, 187, 189, 193. Subchapter L and Dash M. Reserved. Subchapter N. War Risk Insurance Parts 198, 199. Subchapter A. Economic Regulations Parts 200 and 298. Subchapter B. Procedural Regulations Parts 300 and 331. Subchapter C. Reserved. Subchapter D. Special Regulations Parts 372 and 383. Subchapter E. Organization Parts 385, 389. Subchapter F. Policy Statements Parts 398, 399. Chapter 3 Parts 400 1199. 
Commercial Space Transportation, FAR. Subchapter A. General Parts 400, 401. Subchapter B. Procedure Parts 404, 405, 406. Subchapter C. Licensing Parts 411 and 1199. Chapter 6 Parts 1300 and 1399. Air Transportation System Stabilization. Subchapter A. Hotel de Sierra Management and Budget Part 1300. Subchapter B. Air Transportation Stabilization Board Parts 1310 and 1399. Figure 2 2. Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations. With the use of the acronym FAR. Therefore, the FAR began to refer to specific regulations by the term 14 CFR Part XX. Most regulations and sections within are odd numbered, because the FAR realized in 1958 when the Civil Air and Nautics regulations were recodified into the Federal Aviation Regulations that it would be necessary to add regulations later. Over the years, the FAR has sometimes seen the need to issue special Federal Aviation Regulations, FAR. Figure 2-3, these are frequently focused very specifically on a unique situation and are usually given a limited length of time for effectiveness. Note that the FAR number is purely a sequential number and has no relevance to the regulation it is addressing or attached to. 2-3 Special Federal Aviation Regulations SFAR no title appears in 14 CFR 13 23 27-5 50-2 65-1 71 73 77 79 82 84 86 88 97 98 100-2 103 104 108 109 112 Table of Contents Special Federal Aviation Regulation No. 23. Fuel venting and exhaust emission requirements for turbine engine powered airplanes. Special flight rules in the vicinity of the Grand Canyon National Park, as removal of this Far Eagle Directive the 10th of August 2004 prohibition against certain flights between the United States and Libya. Special operating rules for air tour operators in the state of Hawaii. Robinson R22 R44 special training and experience requirements. Prohibition against certain flights within the territory and airspace of Iraq. Prohibition against certain flights within the flight information region of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Prohibition against certain flights within the territory and airspace of Sudan. Prohibition against certain flights within the territory and airspace of Serbia and Montenegro. Airspace and flight operations requirement for the Kodak Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, Albuquerque, NM. Fuel tank system for toddles evaluation requirements. Special Federal Aviation Regulation No. 97- Special operating rules for the conduct of instrument flight rules if area navigation, nave operations using global positioning systems, GPS, in Alaska. Construction or alteration in the vicinity of the private residence of the President of the United States. Relief for U.S. Military and civilian personnel who are assigned outside the United States in support of U.S. Armed Forces Operations. Process for requesting waiver of mandatory separation age for certain Federal Aviation Administration FAR air traffic control specialists. Prohibition against certain flights by Syrian air carriers to the United States. Special Federal Aviation Regulation No. 108 Mitsubishi Mu 2B Series Airplane Special Training, Experience, and Operating Requirements. Special Requirements for Private Use Transport Category Airplanes. Prohibition against certain flights within the Tribal HLLL Flight Information Region FAR Part 25. Part 23. Part 11. Part 91. Part 91. Part 91. Part 61. Part 91. Part 91. Part 91. Part 91. Part 91. Parts 21, 25, 91, 121, 125, 129. Parts 71, 91, 95, 121, 125, 129, 135. Part 77. Part 61, 63, 65. Part 65. Part 91. Part 91. Parts 21, 25, 119. Part 91. Figure 2-3. Special Federal Aviation Regulations from 14 CFR. The remainder of this text focuses only on those regulations relative to air within this certification. There are 30 of these listed in Figure 2-4, and they are shown graphically in Figure 2-5. A significant benefit of this chart is the visual effect showing the interaction of the regulation with other regulations and the placement of the regulation relative to its impact on airworthiness. It is fundamentally important that the definition of the term airworthy be clearly understood. Only recently did the FAR actually define the term airworthy in a regulation. Refer to the 14 CFR Part 3 excerpt following this paragraph. Prior to this definition in Part 3, the term could be implied from reading Part 21, Section 21.183. The term was defined in other non-regulatory FAR publications, and could also be implied from the text found in Block 5 of FAR Form 8102, Standard Airworthiness Certificate. This certificate is required to be visibly placed on board each civil aircraft. Refer to forms presented later in this chapter. Title 14 CFR Part 3, General Requirements. Definitions. The following terms have the stated meanings when used in 14 CFR Part 3, Section 3.5, Statements about Products, Parts, Appliances and Materials. Airworthy means the aircraft conforms to its type design and is in a condition for safe operation. Product means an aircraft, aircraft engine, or aircraft propeller. Record means any writing, drawing, map, recording, tape, film, photograph or other documentary material by which information is preserved or conveyed in any format, including, but not limited to, paper, microfilm, identification plates, stamp marks, barcodes or electronic format, and can neither be separate from, attached to or inscribed on any product, part, appliance or material. 2-4 
Part 1 Definitions and Abbreviations Part 13 Investigative and Enforcement Procedures Part 21 Certification Procedures for Products and Parts Part 23 Air Within List Standards Normal, Utility, Acrobatic, and Commuter Category Air Planes Part 25 Air Within List Standards Transport Category Air Planes Part 27 Air Within List Standards Normal Category Rotorcraft Part 29 Air Within List Standards Transport Category Rotorcraft Part 31 Air Within List Standards Manned Free Balloons Part 33 Air Within List Standard Aircraft Engines Part 34 Fuel Venting and Exhaust Emission Requirements for Turbine Engine Powered Air Planes Part 35 Air Within List Standards Propellers Part 36 Noise Standards Aircraft Type and airworthiness certification part 39 airworthiness directives part 43 maintenance preventive maintenance rebuilding and alteration part 45 identification and registration marking part 47 aircraft registration part 48 registration and marking requirements for small unmanned aircraft part 61 certification pilots Flight Instructors and Ground Instructors Part 63 Certification Flight Crew Members Other Than Pilots Part 65 Certification Airmen Other Than Flight Crew Members Part 68 Requirements For Operating Certain Small Aircraft Without a Medical Certificate Part 91 General Operating and Flight Rules Part 107 Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems Part 119 Certification Air Carriers and Commercial Operators Part 121 Operating Requirements Domestic Flag and Supplemental Operations Part 125 Certification and Operations Airplanes Having a Seating Capacity of 20 or More Passengers Or a Maximum Payload Capacity of 6,000 Pounds or More and rules governing persons on board such aircraft part 135 operating requirements commuter and on-demand operations and rules governing persons on board such aircraft part 145 repair stations part 147 aviation maintenance technician schools part 183 representatives of the administrator figure 2-4 list of fire regulations relative to airworthiness certification airworthiness can be divided into two areas original airworthiness as depicted in figure 2-5 and recurrent airworthiness as depicted in figure 2-6 there are three primary regulations that govern the airworthiness of an aircraft one 14 CFR Part 21, Certification Procedures for Products and Parts. 2. 14 CFR Part 43, Maintenance, Preventive Maintenance, Rebuilding, and Alterations. 3. 14 CFR Part 91, General Operating and Flight Rules. Note that the chart in Figures 2-5 and 2-6 show most of the other airworthiness certification regulations linked to one of these regulations. Although the history section that opens this chapter discusses the FAR as if it was a single unit, it is important to understand that there are various subgroups within the FAR, and each are different responsibilities of oversight in the aviation industry. These may vary by organizational chart or geographic location. The maintenance technician interacts mostly with FAR personnel from the Flight Standards Service AFS, and the Flight Standards District Office FISDO, but may also have some interaction with FAR personnel from the Aircraft Certification Service AIR. Maintenance-related regulations. 14 CFR Part 1, Definitions and Abbreviations. This section is a very comprehensive, but certainly not all-inclusive, list of definitions that both pilots and mechanics must become familiar with. Many regulations often provide additional definitions that are unique to their use and interpretation in that specific part. Title 14 CFR Part 1, Section 1.2, Abbreviations and Symbols, tends to be highly focused on those abbreviations related to flight. 14 CFR Part 21, Certification Procedures for Products and Parts. This regulation, the first of the three, identifies the requirements of and the procedures for obtaining type certificates, TCS, supplemental type certificates, SDCS, production certificates, airworthiness certificates, and import and export approvals. Figure 2-5 Some of the other major areas covered in this part are the procedures for becoming a designated mechanic examiner, DME, designated aircraft maintenance inspector, DAMI, designated engineering representative, designated manufacturing inspection representative, MIA, or designated airworthiness representative, DA, or obtaining a part manufacturer approval, MA, or an authorization related to producing a technical standard order, so, part. Note that part 21 single quote has greatest significance is in the original airworthiness phase, although it has minor application in recurrent airworthiness. Figure 2-5 One of the most important sections of this regulation is section 21.50. Instructions for Continued Airworthiness and Manufacturer's Maintenance Manuals Having Airworthiness Limitations Sections When an aircraft is delivered new from the manufacturer, it comes with maintenance manuals that define the inspection and maintenance actions necessary to maintain the aircraft in airworthy condition. Also, NESTC 2-5 Aircraft Certification Service Air, Original Airworthiness Aircraft Certification as ACO, Certigate Management as MO, Manufacturing Inspection District as MIDO, 91 General Operating and Flight Rules 14 CFR Paragraph 91.319 14 CFR Paragraph 91.409 Investigative and Enforcement Procedures 13. Manufacturer 43.3 J. Airworthiness Standards Normal, Utility, Acrobatic, and Commuter Category Airplanes Airworthiness Standards Transport Category Airplanes Continued Airworthiness and Safety Improvements for Transport Category Airplanes Airworthiness Standards Normal Category Rotorcraft Airworthiness Standards Transport Category Rotorcraft Airworthiness Standards Manned Free Balloons Airworthiness Standards Aircraft Engines Airworthiness Standards Propellers Noise standards, aircraft type and airworthiness certification. Airworthiness directives. 23, 25, 26, 27, 21. Certification procedures for products and parts. 45. Identification and registration marking. MA. TC. STC. SOA. Paragraph 21.8 D. 8110.42. Parts manufacturing approval. 29, 31, 33. Paragraph 21.9 A. 5. Owner operator build parts. 8110.37 Dear Guidance Handbook Fuel venting and exhaust emission requirements for turbine engine powered airplanes 34 
35, 36, 39, 47. Aircraft registration. 183. Representatives of the administrator. 8100.8. Design year management handbook. 8130.2. Airworthiness certification. 8132.2. Design year airworthiness certification. Suspected unapproved parts program. 2150.3. Compliance and enforcement. Demand dear dar dar dp dear me pre. Fire orders. 8100.7. Axif 8110.4. Type certification 8120.2. Production approvals. Figure 2 5. Graphic chart of fire regulations. 2 6. Flight standard service as recurrent airworthiness. Certificate management as MO. Flight standards district as FISDO. International field as IFO. 61 certification. Pilots and flight instructors. 21. Certification procedures for products and parts subpart H, L, K. Certification, flight crew members other than pilots. Certification, airmen other than flight crew members. A and 63, 65. Dispatcher. Repairman parachute rigger. Certification, air carriers and commercial operators. 91. General operating and flight rules. 43. Maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, and alteration. 119. Certification and operation, domestic, flag, and supplemental air carriers and commercial operators of large aircraft. 121. 45. Identification and registration marking. Paragraph 43.13A Methods, Techniques, and Practices in Current Manufacturers' Maintenance Manuals. Certification and Operations, Airplanes having a seating capacity of 20 or more passengers or a maximum payload capacity of 6,000 pounds or more. 8,400.10 Deviation. 125. 47. Aircraft Registration. 183. Representatives of the Administrator. Paragraph 43.5 No person may approve for return to service, unless. Paragraph 43.5. Maintenance record entry required by Paragraph 43.9. Or paragraph 43.11, as appropriate. 14 CFR 43. Appendix B FAR Form 337. Paragraph 43.13 B Work and materials of such a quality that condition will be at least equal to the original or property altered condition. 8110.37. Dear Guidance Handbook. 135 Air Taxi Operators and Commercial Operators. 9 or less 10 or more. 145 Repair Stations. Operating Specifications. Repair Station Manual. 120 Drug and Alcohol Testing Program. 8100.8. Design Year Management Handbook, 8130.2. Airworthiness Certification, 8132.2. Design Year Airworthiness Certification. Suspected Unapproved Parts Program, 2150.3. Compliance and Enforcement. Demand Dear Daro de Dar DPE Dear Me Pre. Fire Orders, 8900.1 Sims. Figure 2 6. Graphic Chart of Fire Regulations Continued. 2 7. Modification that was developed after 1981 must have, as part of the STC documentation, a complete set of instructions for continued airworthiness ECA. This ECA contains inspection and maintenance information intended to be used by the technician in maintaining that part of the aircraft that has been altered since it was new. This ECA is comprised of 16 specific subjects. Figure 2-7 An ECA developed in accordance with this checklist should be acceptable to the Aviation Safety Inspector ASI, reviewing a major alteration. 14 CFR Part 23 Airworthiness Standards Normal, Utility, Acrobatic, and Commuter Category Airplanes Aircraft certificated under 14 CFR Part 23 represent the greatest portion of what the industry refers to as general aviation. These aircraft vary from the small two-place piston engine, propeller-driven trainers that are frequently used for flight training, to turbine-powered corporate jets used to transport business executives. Seating capacity is limited to 9 or less on all aircraft, except the commuter aircraft where the maximum passenger seating is 19, excluding the pilot and co-pilot seats. This part specifies the airworthiness standards that must be met in order for a manufacturer to receive a DC and for the aircraft to receive an airworthiness certificate. Part 23 aircraft are those aircraft that have a maximum certificated take-off weight of 12,500 pounds or less, except for those aircraft in the commuter category. The maximum certificated take-off weight limit rises to 19,000 pounds or less for these aircraft. Part 23 has seven subparts, six of them providing detailed criteria for the design of these aircraft. The first, subpart A, defines the applicability of this regulation. The others are, subpart, light. Subpart, trutches. Subpart, design and construction. Subpart, power plant. Subpart, equipment. Subpart, light crew interface and other information. Within each of these subparts are numerous sections that specify details, such as center of gravity, CG, gust load factors, removable fasteners, the shape of certain flight deck controls, engine and propeller requirements, fuel tank markings, flight deck instrumentation marking and placards, cabin hour width, and flammability resistant standards. 14 CFR Part 25, Airworthiness Standards, Transport Category Airplanes. The standards in 14 CFR Part 25 apply to large aircraft with a maximum certificated take-off weight of more than 12,500 pounds. This segment of aviation is usually referred to as commercial aviation and includes most of the aircraft seen at a large passenger airport, except for the commuter aircraft included in 14 CFR Part 23. However, the ability to carry passengers is not a requirement for aircraft certified to 14 CFR Part 25. Many of these aircraft are also used to transport cargo. This chapter is subdivided into similar design subpart categories and the same sequence as the requirements specified in 14 CFR Part 23. 
14 CFR Part 27, Airworthiness Standards, Normal Category Rotorcraft. This regulation deals with a small rotor wing aircraft and is consistent with 14 CFR Part 23 with limiting the passenger seating to 9 or less. However, the maximum certificated weight is limited to 7,000 pounds. It contains similar design subparts identified in 14 CFR Part 23 that provide the details for designing the aircraft. 14 CFR Part 29, Airworthiness Standards, Transport Category Rotorcraft. This section specifies those standards applicable to helicopters with a maximum certified weight greater than 7,000 pounds. However, it also includes additional parameters based upon seating capacity and an additional weight limit. Those parameters are passenger seating, 9 or less, 10 or more, and whether the helicopter is over or under a maximum weight of 20,000 pounds. The design subparts of Part 29 are similar to those in 14 CFR Parts 23, 25, and 27. 14 CFR Part 33, Airworthiness Standards, Aircraft Engines. Each of the four preceding 14 CFR regulations require that the engine used in the aircraft must be type certificated. Title 14 CFR Part 33 details the requirements for both reciprocating and turbine-style aircraft engines. It not only specifies the design and construction requirements, but also the block test requirements that subject the engine to extremely demanding testing in order to prove its capability of enduring the stresses of powering the aircraft. 14 CFR Part 35, Airworthiness Standards, Propellers. Just as each engine used on an aircraft must have a DC, the propeller must also be type certificated. This part is arranged the same way that 14 CFR Part 33 is, in that subpart B specifies design and construction, while subpart C covers tests and inspections. 2-8. Sample. Item Subject. 1. Introduction briefly describes the aircraft, engine, propeller, or component that has been altered. Include any other information regarding the content, scope, purpose, arrangement, applicability, definitions, abbreviations, precautions, units of measurement, list of parts used, referenced publications, and distribution of the ECA as applicable. 2. Description of the major alteration and its functions, including an explanation of its interface with other systems, if any. 3. Control, operation information, or special procedures, if any. 4. Servicing information, such as types of fluids used, servicing points, and location of access panels, as appropriate. 5. Maintenance instructions, such as recommended inspection slash maintenance periods in which each of the major alteration components are inspected, cleaned, lubricated, adjusted, and tested, including applicable wear tolerances and work recommended at each scheduled maintenance period. This section can refer to the manufacturer's instructions for the equipment installed where appropriate, for example, functional checks, repairs, inspections. It should also include any special notes, cautions, or warnings, as applicable. 6. Troubleshooting information, describes probable malfunctions, how to recognize those malfunctions, and the remedial actions to take. 7. Removal and replacement information, describes the order and method of removing and replacing products or parts, and any necessary precautions. This section should also describe or refer to manufacturer's instructions to make required tests, checks, alignment, calibrations, center of gravity changes, lifting, or shoring, etc., if any. 8. Diagrams of access plates and information, if needed, to gain access for inspection. 9. Special inspection requirements, such as X-ray, ultrasonic testing, or magnetic particle inspection, if required. 10. Application of protective treatments to the affected area after inspection and or maintenance, if any. 11. Data relative to structural fasteners such as type, torque, and installation requirements, if any. 12. List of special tools, special tools that are required, if any. 13. For commuter category aircraft, provide the following additional information, as applicable. A. Electrical loads B. Methods of balancing flight controls C. Identification of primary and secondary structures D. Special repair methods applicable to the aircraft 14. Recommended overhaul periods, required to be noted on the ECA when an overhaul period has been established by the manufacturer of the component or equipment. If no overhaul period exists, the ECA should state for item 14, no additional overhaul time limitations. 15. Airworthiness limitation section includes any approved airworthiness limitations identified by the manufacturer or FAR type certificate holding office, for example, an STC incorporated in a larger field approved major alteration may have an airworthiness limitation. The fire inspector should not establish, all to, or cancel air within these limitations without coordinating with the appropriate fire type certificate holding office. If no changes are made to the air within these limitations, the ECA should stay for item 15, no additional air within these limitations, or not applicable. 16. Revision includes information on how to revise the ECA. For example, a letter will be submitted to the local fire office with a copy of the revised fire form 337 and revised ECA. The fire inspector accepts the change by signing block 3 and including the following statement, the attached revised slash new instructions for continued airworthiness date group of underscores for the above aircraft or component major alteration have been accepted by the FAR, superseding the instructions for continued airworthiness date group of underscores. After the revision has been accepted, a maintenance record entry will be made, identifying the revision, its location, and date on the FAR form 337, figure 2-7, instructions for continued airworthiness ECA checklist, 2-9. Since regulations change over the years, not every aircraft presently flying meets the current design regulations as printed this year. When regulations are revised, they are printed in the Federal Register and released with an amendment number that ties them to the regulation being revised. Aircraft are required to meet only the specifications in force at the time the aircraft is built. Note, the preceding statement does not apply to the mandatory requirements imposed by Airworthiness Directives, AD, as these usually have a compliance date included in the text of the AD note. 14 CFR Part 39, Airworthiness Directives. In spite of all the emphasis on proper design and certification testing, sometimes the actual day-to-day -day use of the aircraft causes unanticipated wear or failure to occur. 
When that happens, if the FAR determines that the wearer failure represents an unsafe condition and that the condition is likely to exist in other products of the same type of design, it issues an AD. Actual AD notes are not included in 14 CFR Part 39, but rather are printed in the Federal Register and are linked to this part as amendments to 14 CFR Part 39, Section 39.13. AD notes are legally enforceable rules that apply to aircraft, aircraft engines, propellers, and appliances. 14 CFR Part 43, Maintenance, Preventive Maintenance, Rebuilding, and Alteration. This regulation represents the heart of aviation maintenance and is one of the three major regulations previously identified. The 13 rules and six appendices contained within 14 CFR Part 43 provide the standard for maintaining all civilian aircraft currently registered in the United States. Note that 14 CFR Part 43 has a significant relationship with Part 91 and other parts in maintaining continued airworthiness. Figure 2-6, a more detailed explanation of this regulation is presented later in this text. 14 CFR Part 45, Identification and Registration Marking. Title 14 of the CFR Part 45 includes the requirements for the identification of aircraft, engines, propellers, certain replacement and modification parts, and the nationality and registration marking required on U.S. registered aircraft. All type certificated products must have the following information on a fireproof data plate or similar approved fireproof method. 1. Builder's name. 2. Model designation. 3. Builder's serial number. 4. DC number, if any, 5. Production certificate number, if any, 6. For aircraft engines, the established rating. 7. Reference to compliance or exemption to 14 CFR Part 34, fuel venting and exhaust emission requirements for turbine engine powered airplanes. 8. Any other information that the FAR determines to be appropriate. Replacement and modification parts are produced in accordance with the parts manufacturer approvals. 14 CFR Part 21, Section 21.303, and must have the following information permanently and legibly marked. 1. The letters FAPMA. 2. The name, symbol, or trademark of the holder of the PMA. 3. The part number. 4. The name and model designation for each type certificated product it can be installed on. If a part has a specified replacement time, inspection interval, or other related procedure specification in the maintenance manual or ECA, that part must have a part number and a serial number or the equivalent of each. The manufacturer of the life-limited part must either provide marking instructions for that part, or state that the part cannot be marked without a compromise to its integrity. Exceptions are made for the identification of parts that are too small to be practical to mark the required data. Nationality and registration marks, commonly known as the N number for U.S. registered aircraft, can vary in size, depending on the year that the aircraft was built and whether or not the aircraft has been repainted. The most common size is at least 12 inches in height. Small aircraft built at least 30 years ago, or replicas of these, or experimental exhibition or amateur built aircraft may use letters at least 2 inches in height. Only a few aircraft are authorized to display registration markings of at least 3 inches. Note that this regulation sits directly on the vertical line in figure 2-5 indicating that it applies to both original and recurrent airworthiness. 14 CFR Part 47, Aircraft Registration. This regulation provides the requirements for registering aircraft. It includes procedures for both owner and dealer registration of aircraft. 14 CFR Part 65, Certification, Airmen other than flight crew members, pilots, flight instructors, and ground instructors are certificated under 14 CFR Part 61. Flight crew other than pilots are certificated under 14 CFR Part 63. However, 2-10. Many other people are also required to be certificated by the FAR for the U.S. Aviation fleet to operate smoothly and efficiently. Title 14 CFR Part 65 addresses many of those other people. Subpart, I have traffic control tower operators, subpart, craft dispatchers, subpart, mechanics, subpart, repairmen, subpart, parachute riggers. A more detailed discussion of this chapter with a special emphasis on mechanics is included in Chapter 15, The Mechanics Certificate. Note, SFAR 100-2, Relief for U.S. Military and civilian personnel who are assigned outside the United States in support of U.S. Armed Forces Operations is a good example of the specific nature and limited time frame that are part of SFAR. 14 CFR Part 91, General Operating and Flight Rules. This is the final regulation of the three major regulations identified earlier in this chapter. Note its interaction in figure 2-6 with other regulations visually indicating its operational involvement or recurrent airworthiness. Although it is an operational regulation that is focused toward the owner, operator, and or pilot of the aircraft, the maintenance technician must have an awareness of this regulation. Two examples of these maintenance-related issues are 1. Section 91.207, Emergency Locator Transmitters. Paragraph C. 2. Battery Replacement Interval and Requirement for a Logbook Entry Indicating the Expiration Date of the New Battery. 2. Section 91.213, Inoperative Instruments and Equipment. Paragraph A2, a letter of authorization from the FISDO authorizing the operation of the aircraft under a minimum equipment list, MEL, constitutes RSTC and must be carried in the aircraft during flight. Subpart, maintenance, preventive maintenance and alterations, sections 91.401 through 91.421. This is the section of most interest to the technician. He or she must be familiar with it because it does carry some indirect responsibility for the technician. Note that the 14 CFR Part 91 icon in figure 2-6 has a direct line to 14 CFR Part 43. This is because section 91.403b states, no person may perform maintenance, preventive maintenance, or alterations on an aircraft other than is prescribed in this subpart and other applicable regulations, including part 43 of this chapter. A more complete discussion of this regulation, especially subpart, maintenance, preventive maintenance, and alterations is presented later in this chapter. 14 CFR part 119, certification, air carriers and commercial operators. 
In order to better understand the next three regulations discussed here, 14 CFR Parts 121, 125, and 135, a brief overview of 14 CFR Part 119 is beneficial. Figure 2-8, there are more than 50 advisory circulars acts in the 120 series alone providing additional non-regulatory information concerning the variety of procedures involved with these operations. There are basically three different criteria that must be analyzed in order to properly determine the regulation that applies. These are, 1. Is the service provided for private carriage or common carriage? 2. Is the aircraft for hire or is it not for hire? 3. Is it a large or small aircraft? Act 120-12, as revised, provides the following definition regarding this criterion. A carrier becomes a common carrier when it holds itself out to the public or to a segment of the public as willing to furnish transportation within the limits of its facilities to any person who wants it. There are four elements in defining a common carrier. 1. A holding out of a willingness to. 2. Transport persons or property. 3. From place to place. 4. For compensation. 14 CFR Part 119 Applicability of Regulations. 91, 125, 135, 121. CFR Part 91, Section 91.501 B5, CFR Part 119, Section 119.5. Private carriage. Common carriage. Not for hire. For hire. Larger slash C larger slash C. Larger slash C smaller slash C. Larger slash C smaller slash C. All other slash C. 91,125,135,121. Figure 2-8. Applicability of regulations. 2-11. This holding out that makes a person a common carrier can be done in many ways, and it does not matter how it is done. Signs and advertising are the most direct means of holding out, but are not the only ones. Carriage for hire, which does not involve holding out, is private carriage. Private carriers for hire are sometimes called contract carriers, but the term is borrowed from the Interstate Commerce Act and legally inaccurate when used in connection with the Federal Aviation Act. Private carriage for hire is carriage for one or several selected customers, generally on a long-term basis. The number of contracts must not be too great, otherwise, it implies a willingness to make a contract with anybody. A carrier operating pursuant to 18 to 24 contracts has been held to be a common carrier because it held itself out to serve the public generally to the extent of its facilities. Private carriage has been found in cases where three contracts have been the sole basis of the operator's business. Operations that constitute common carriage are required to be conducted under 14 CFR Part 121 or 135. Private carriage may be conducted under 14 CFR Part 91 or 125. The term for hire is not defined in any other FAR documents but is generally understood to mean that compensation for both direct and indirect expenses associated with the flight, as well as a profit margin for the operator, are collected from the person or persons benefiting from the flight operation. The determination of whether the aircraft is large or small is based upon the definition provided in 14 CFR Part 1. If the aircraft has maximum certificated take-eath weight of 12,500 pounds or more, it is a large aircraft. All aircraft less than 12,500 maximum certificated take-eath weight are considered to be small aircraft. It may also help the reader understand when 14 CFR Parts 121, 125, and 135 regulations apply by taking a brief look at a list of flight operations where 14 CFR Part 119 does not apply. 1. Student instruction. 2. Non-stop sightseeing flights with less than 30 seats and less than 25 nautical miles NM from the departure airport. 3. Ferry or training flights. 4. Crop dusting or other agricultural operations. 5. Banner towing. 6. Aerial photography or surveying. 7. Firefighting. 8. Powering or pipeline patrol. 9. Parachute operations on non-stop flights within 25 mm from the departure airport. 10. Fractional ownership in accordance with 14 CFR Part 91, Subpart K. 14 CFR Part 121, Operating Requirements, Domestic, Flag, and Supplemental Operations. Title 14 CFR Part 121 establishes the operational rules for air carriers flying for compensation or higher. A domestic operation is any scheduled operation within the 48 contiguous states, the District of Columbia, or any territory or position conducted with either a turbojet aircraft, an airplane having 10 or more passenger seats, or a payload capacity greater than 7,500 pounds. A flag operation means any scheduled operation operating in Alaska or Hawaii to any point outside of those states, or to any territory or position of the United States, or from any point outside the United States to any point outside the United States conducted with either a turbojet aircraft, an airplane having 10 or more passenger seats, or a payload capacity greater than 7,500 pounds. Supplemental operation means any common carriage operation conducted with airplanes having more than 30 passenger seats. If less than 30, the airplane must also be listed on the operations specifications of domestic and flag carriers with a payload capacity of more than 7,500 pounds. Part 121 operators are required by 14 CFR Part 119 to have the following personnel. Director of Safety. Director of Operations. Director of Maintenance. Chief Pilot. Chief Inspector. There are 28 subparts and 16 appendices in this regulation. However, only subparts J and L are of concern for the mechanic. Subpart, maintenance, preventive maintenance, and all durations, identifies special air within this requirements that deals with many other mechanical aspects of a passenger or cargo aircraft. Subpart, maintenance, preventive maintenance, and all durations, requires that a Part 121 operator have an operational manual that contains the following information. Organizational chart. List of individuals who my inspections. Why perform required. 2-12. Company maintenance, preventive maintenance, or alterations, a system to both preserve and retrieve maintenance and inspection-related information. 
Also, 14 CFR Part 121, Section 121.1105, establishes the requirement for conducting inspections on aging aircraft. 14 CFR Part 125, Certification and Operations, airplanes having a seating capacity of 20 or more passengers or a maximum payload capacity of 6,000 pounds or more, and rules governing persons on board such aircraft. This regulation applies to private and non-common carriage when such operations are conducted in airplanes having 20 or more seats, excluding crew members or having a payload capacity of 6,000 pounds or more. There must also be operations specifications issued to the operator that include the following information. Kinds of operations authorized. Types of aircraft and registration numbers of the airplanes authorized for use. Approval of the provisions of the operator's manual relating to airplane inspections, together with necessary conditions and limitations. Registration numbers of the airplanes that are to be inspected under an approved airplane inspection program are up under 14 CFR Part 125, Section 125.247. FAR specifies how the flight crew, ground personnel, and maintenance technicians conduct their operations. A pivotal portion of this regulation is the first section in subpart J, 14 CFR Part 135, Section 135.411, Application. This section specifies that having a type certificated passenger seating configuration of 9 or less may be maintained in accordance with the maintenance manual provided by the aircraft manufacturer. Those aircraft having a type certificated passenger seating configuration of 10 or more seats must be maintained in accordance with the maintenance manual written by the air carrier and must then be submitted to the FAR for approval. The requirements for the maintenance manual are specified in 14 CFR Part 135, Section 135.427. 14 CFR Part 135, Sections 135.415 through 135.417 and 135.423 through 135.443 specify additional maintenance requirements. 14 CFR Part 135, Sections 135.415 and 135.417 are applicable regardless of the number of seats in the aircraft. A major change in the 9 or less aircraft maintenance requirements occurred in February of 2005 when Section 135.422, Aging Aircraft, was incorporated into 14 CFR Part 135. This new subpart, note the even number, to 14 CFR 135 specifically prohibits a certificate holder from operating certain aircraft unless the administrator has completed the aging aircraft inspection and records review. This inspection requires the certificate holder to show the FAR that the maintenance of age-sensitive parts and components has been adequate to ensure safety. This section only applies to multi-engine aircraft in schedule though, procedures for the control of weight and balance of airplanes re, any other item that the administrator determines is age necessary are. Just as in 14 CFR Part 121, Subpart D identifies specialty air within this requirements dealing mostly with the ray, mechanical devices of the aircraft. 14 CFR Part 135, Operating Requirements, Commuter and On-Demand Operations and Rules Governing Persons on Board Such Aircraft. As the title of this section states, this regulation is applicable to short-distance commercial aircraft operations or commuters and non-scheduled carriers that operate on demand. These aircraft are frequently referred to as air taxi or rare charter aircraft. Aircraft operated under 14 CFR Part 135 must be operated and maintained in accordance with the Certificate Holders Operations Manual. This manual, when accepted by the operation with nine or fewer passenger seats, it does not apply to aircraft operating in Alaska. The required record view start date varies depending on the age of the aircraft. However, once initiated, the repetitive inspection intervals need not to exceed seven years. The certificate holder must make both the aircraft and accords available to the FAR for inspection and review. The certificate holder must notify the administrator at least 60 days in advance of the availability of the aircraft and the records for review. The records must include the following information. 1. Total years in service of the airplane. 2. Total time in service of the airframe. 3. Date of the last inspection and records review required by this section. 4. Current status of life limited parts. 5. Time since the last overhaul of all structural components required to be overhauled on a specific time basis. 2-13. 6. Current inspection status of the airplane, including the time since the last inspection required by the inspection program that the airplane is maintained under. 7. Current status of applicable as, including the date and methods of compliance, and, if the AD involves recurring action, the time and date when the next action is required. 8. A list of major structural alterations. 9. A report of major structural repairs and the current inspection status of those repairs. 14 CFR Part 145, Repair Stations. This regulation underwent a major rewrite released in 2004 and was the most comprehensive change in nearly 20 years. It may be of interest to note an airframe and power plant a &P, certificate is not necessary to be employed at a repair station. The repair station may also employ both repairmen under 14 CFR Part 65, Subpart D, and non-FAR certificated personnel. All work that is signed off is done so using the repair station certificate number and must be done only by persons authorized by 14 CFR Part 65 to approve an article for return to service, RTS. Just as other certificate holders must have an operations manual, the repair station must have a repair station manual that contains the following, an organizational chart. Procedures for maintaining rosters. Description of housing, facilities, and equipment. Procedures for revising the capability list and conducting a self-evaluation audit. Procedures for revising the training program. Procedures governing work done at another location. Procedures for working on a carrier aircraft. Description of the required records and record keeping. Procedures for revising the repair station manual. Description of the system to identify and control the sections of the manual. All records from repair station maintenance activity must be kept a minimum of two years. Domestic repair station certificates are effective until they are surrendered, suspended, or revoked. 
The certificates of foreign repair stations expire, usually after one or two years and must be renewed. 14 CFR Part 147, Aviation Maintenance Technician Schools. Title 14 CFR Part 147 defines the requirements for obtaining a maintenance training certificate. This certificate may be for either airframe, power plant, or a combination of the two. The minimum number of curriculum hours to conducting either airframe or power plant training independently is 1,150. If both A and P ratings are offered, the combined total curriculum hours are 1,900. This is because of the 1,150 hours specified to obtain either the airframe or the power plant rating, 400 hours are devoted to general studies. Only one set of general studies hours is applicable to the combined total. Therefore, 400 hours can be subtracted from the implied total of 2,300 hours, 1,150 times 2, to obtain the reduced figure of 1,900 hours. Requirements are detailed as follows. Appendix, Uriculum Requirements. Appendix, General Curriculum Subjects. Appendix, Frame Curricular Subjects. Appendix, Oak Plant Curriculum Subjects. 14 CFR Part 183, Representatives of the Administrator. As the aviation industry grows and the design, manufacture, and testing of aircraft gets more complex, the FAR faces both budget constraints and personnel shortages. As early as 1962, the FAR began the program to allow private sector persons in various areas of industry to be designees or representatives of the FAR Administrator. These people are not FAR employees, but rather are designated by the FAR to act on their behalf. Regular doctors may serve as aviation medical examiners, skilled pilots can become pilot examiners, and experienced airframe and or power plant mechanics can become designated mechanic examiners, DME, to administer the oral and practical portion of the FAR testing. Other lesser known designees are the designated engineering representatives, DEER, the designated manufacturing inspection representatives, MIA, and the designated airworthiness representatives, DAR. This approved data based upon their engineering training and their knowledge of FAR regulations. MIAs make conformity inspections only at their employer. They are similar to designated repairmen because they are only authorized to inspect parts at their employer's facility. Must conduct aircraft certification and aircraft inspection functions on behalf of the FAR depending on specific functions they are authorized. They may perform work for either manufacturing facilities or maintenance entities depending on their designation. 2-14 Explanation of Primary Regulations, Parts 43 and 91, 14 CFR Part 43, Maintenance, Preventative Maintenance Rebuilding, and Alteration. Section 43.1, Applicability. Paragraph A states quite clearly that aircraft, whether U.S. or foreign registered operating under 14 CFR Part 121 or 135 and component parts thereof must be maintained in accordance with the rules set forth in this part. Although Paragraph B states quite clearly the type of aircraft that this part does not apply to, it seems to have led to considerable confusion within the aviation industry. If an aircraft is flying with a special air worthiness, experimental certificate, FAR Form 8137, special air worthiness certificate, pink color certificate, and that is the only air worthiness certificate this aircraft has ever had, then 14 CFR Part 43 does not apply. Conversely, sometimes during maintenance, especially STC modification, the STC is addressed later in this chapter, it becomes necessary to temporarily place the aircraft into special air within experimental. This is done to show compliance with federal regulations. These aircraft must still be maintained in accordance with 14 CFR Part 43, because the aircraft had a different kind of air within in this example of standard prior to being issued a special air within certificate. Section 43.2, Records of Overhaul and Rebuilding. These terms are not defined in 14 CFR Part 1 and are given full explanation in this subpart. Each term states that it may not be used to describe work done on an aircraft, airframe, aircraft engine, propeller, appliance, or component part unless that item has been disassembled, cleaned, inspected, repaired as necessary, reassembled, tested. The key difference between the two terms is in determining how the item is tested. If it is tested in accordance with approved standards acceptable to the administration that have been developed and documented by the manufacturer, the item is said to be overhauled. This is basically another way of describing service limits, a term frequently used to describe manufacturer specified acceptable limits for used parts. A rebuilt item, on the other hand, must be tested to the same tolerances and limits as a new item. Section 43.3, Persons Authorized to Perform Maintenance, Preventive Maintenance, Rebuilding, and Alterations. There are nine different persons who may perform maintenance. Reminder, per 14 CFR Part 1, the FAR definition of a person is an individual, firm, partnership, corporation, association, joint stock association, or governmental entity. It includes a trustee, receiver, as any or similar representative of any of them. 1. Certificated Mechanic, per 14 CFR Part 65. 2. Certificated Repairman, per 14 CFR Part 65. 3. Person working under the supervision of a Certificated Mechanic or Repairman. 4. Holder of Repair Station Certificate. 5. Holder of an Air Carrier Certificate. 6. Except for holders of a Sport Pilot Certificate, the holder of a Pilot Certificate issued under Part 61 may perform preventive maintenance on any aircraft owned or operated by that pilot which is not used under 14 CFR Part 121, 129, or 135. The holder of a sport pilot certificate may perform preventive maintenance on an aircraft owned or operated by that pilot and issued a special air within this certificate in the light sport category. 7. Pilot of a helicopter when operated under 14 CFR Part 135 and in remote areas may perform specific preventive maintenance actions. These actions may only be accomplished under the following conditions. The mechanical difficulty or malfunction occurred en route to or in the remote area. The pilot has been satisfactorily trained and is authorized in writing by the certificate holder to perform the required maintenance. There is no certificated mechanic available. The certificate holder has procedures to evaluate the work performed when a decision for airworthiness is required. The work done is listed in paragraph C of Appendix A of this chapter. 8. 
Holder of Part 135 Certificate may allow pilots of aircraft with nine or less passenger seats to remove and reinstall cabin seats and stretchers and cabin mounted medical oxygen bottles. These actions may only be accomplished under the following conditions. The pilot has been satisfactorily trained and is authorized in writing by the certificate holder to perform the required maintenance. 2-15 The certificate holder has written procedures available to the pilot to evaluate the work performed. 9. Manufacturer may inspect and rebuild any item it has manufactured. Section 43.5 Approval to return to service after maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, and alterations. Approving an aircraft component for return to service after maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, or alteration must be done by creating an appropriate maintenance record entry as required by either 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.9 or 43.11. This may include the use of FAR Form 337, Major Repair and Alteration, if the maintenance action was a major repair or a major alteration. Whenever a maintenance action is being planned, it is critical that the technician understands exactly 1. What he she is going to do. 2. How that work is classified by the FAR. 3. What type of documentation is required to support this activity. First consider whether this repair or an alteration. This should be a relatively simple decision since a repair basically returns the aircraft to its previous or unaltered condition, that is, replacing magnetos, an exhaust system, tires, or brakes. Even replacing an entire engine, although it is a big job, is still a repair if it is the one properly specified for that aircraft. An alteration, on the other hand, always changes or modifies the aircraft from its previous state, that is, installing winglets, new avionics, or an engine that is not listed in the aircraft TCDS. The second question to consider is whether or not the work that to be performed constitutes a major or a minor maintenance action. A major action is typically one that might appreciably affect weight, balance, structural strength, performance, power plant operation, flight characteristics, or other qualities affecting airworthiness and that are not done according to accepted practices or cannot be done by elementary operations. This is a much more complex question, but it is extremely important as it drives the final question concerning the substantiating documentation. Please refer to 14 CFR Part 1 and Part 43, Appendix A, for additional clarification and examples. The third question deals with the type of documentation required to substantiate the work performed. Minor repairs and alterations need only to refer to acceptable data, such as manufacturer's maintenance manuals or Act 43.13-1. The maintenance action can simply be recorded in the maintenance record as a logbook entry. Major repairs and alterations require approved data. Some examples of approved data are AD notes, SDCS, DCDS, DEAR specific delegations, and FAR, approved manufacturer service bulletins, SB. Sometimes the repair or alteration being performed does not have previously approved data. In that case, the technician may request that the FAR accomplish a field approval. In this procedure, the technician completes the front side of Form 337 through Block 6, leaving Block 3 open for later FAR approval, and then indicates in Block 8 on the back what work is to be done and what the substantiating reference data is. Form 337 is then submitted to the local FAR's DOE office for review and approval by an assay. If necessary, this assay may seek input from other ASIS or FAR specialists to assist in the review of the data. If the data is found to comply with FAR regulations, the assay enters one of the following statements in Block 3, depending on whether the assay has performed a review of the data and the or has physically inspected the aircraft. The technical data identified herein has been found to comply with applicable air within this requirements and is hereby approved for use only on the above described aircraft, subject to conformity inspection by a person authorized in 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.7. Or, the alteration or repair identified herein complies with the applicable air within this requirements and is approved for use only on the above described aircraft, subject to conformity inspection by a person authorized in 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.7. Section 43.7, persons authorized to approve aircraft, airframes, aircraft engines, propellers, appliances, or component parts for return to service after maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, or alteration. There are seven different persons listed in this section who may sign RTS documentation. 1. Certificated mechanic or holder of an inspection authorization. Year 2. Holder of the repair station certificate. 3. Manufacturer 4. Holder of an air carrier certificate. 5. Certificated private pilot. 6. Repairman certificated with a maintenance rating for light support aircraft. Also only. 2-16. 7. Certificated support pilot for preventive maintenance on an aircraft owned and or operated by him or her. Note that although a certificated repairman is authorized to work on a product undergoing maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, or alterations, refer to 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.3, he or she is not authorized to approve that product for RTS. He or she must make the appropriate maintenance record entry per the requirements of 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.9 or 43.11. Section 43.9, Content. Form and disposition of maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, and alteration records except inspection performed in accordance with parts 91 and 125, and sections 135.411A1 and 135.419 of this chapter. The first observation is that this section specifically excludes inspection entries. Those are covered in 14 CFR Part 43, section 43.11. This section deals exclusively with maintenance record entries. The next observation is that the list of maintenance actions includes preventive maintenance. As stated in the explanation of 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.3, a certificated pilot is authorized to perform preventive maintenance on the aircraft he or she owns or operates. Therefore, remember that the pilot must make a record entry of the preventive maintenance he or she has accomplished. There are three distinct issues to be addressed in the maintenance entry, and they answer the questions of what, when, and who. What, a description of the work performed. When, a date the work was completed. Who, the name of the person who did the work if other than the person who approves the RTS. 
the signature, certificate number, and type of certificate of the person who is approving the work for RTS. Note, frequently, logbooks have a statement entered that ends something like this. And is hereby returned to service. Joe Fix Ray and P, certificate number 123,456,789. As this section of the regulation currently reads, that part of the record entry is not required. Title 14 of the CFR Part 43, Section 43.9 clearly states that the signature constitutes the approval for return to service only for the work performed. Furthermore, the technician is only signing off the work he or she has done. Later, 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.11 explains that an inspection write-up usually carries a broader scope of responsibility. This section is very clear that the entry completed in accordance with this section only holds the technician responsible for the service maintenance action he or she entered. If the maintenance accomplished was a major repair or alteration, the work must be documented on FAR Form 337 and requires supporting approved data. If the maintenance action was a major repair and it was done by a certificated repair station, a signed copy of the completed customer work order accompanied by a signed maintenance release may be used in lieu of the FAR Form 337. Section 43.10, Disposition of Life Limited Aircraft Parts. Note the even number again. This regulation became part of 14 CFR Part 43 in 2002. This section presents two terms not previously defined in 14 CFR. 1. Life limited part means any part that has specified a mandatory replacement limit. 2. Life status means the accumulated cycles, hours, or any other mandatory limit of a life limited part. This section then goes on to specify what to do with parts that are temporarily removed from and then reinstalled on a type certificated product, what to do with parts that are removed from a type certified product and not immediately reinstalled, and how to transfer life limited parts from one type certificated product to another. When a life limited part is removed, the person removing it from the type certificated product must control the part and ensure proper tracking of the life limiting factor. This is to prevent the installation of the part after it has reached its life limit. There are seven possible methods the technician or repair facility may choose from to comply with this requirement. 1. Record keeping. 2. Tagging. 3. Non-permanent marking. 4. Permanent marking. 5. Segregation. 6. Mutilation. 7. Any other method approved or accepted by the FAR. When a life-limited part is transferred, the information concerning the life status of that part must be transferred with it. Although regulations already did exist that required the tracking of life-limited parts when they were installed on an aircraft, this regulation was generated to govern the disposition of such parts when they were removed from the aircraft. 2-17 Section 43.11 Content, Form, and Disposition of Records for Inspections Conducted Under Parts 91 and 125 and Sections 135.411A1 and 135.419 of this chapter. This section deals exclusively with inspection record entries. However, the requirements are similar to 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.9 in that information of what, when, and who is required. What type of inspection, including a brief description. When, date of the inspection and the total time in service. Who, the signature, certificate number, and kind of certificate of the person approving or disapproving the RTS. Since this is an inspection write-up and not a maintenance entry, it is quite possible that the inspecting technician could reject or disapprove the item being inspected for the RTS. When that situation occurs, the regulation states in paragraph B that a list of discrepancies must be given to the owner. A reference to this list and its delivery to the aircraft owner must be reflected in the record entry. Although the regulation neither specifies how those discrepancies can be cleared, nor who made them, any appropriately rated repair station or certificated technician can perform the required maintenance actions. When they are completed and the proper maintenance record entries are generated in accordance with 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.9, the aircraft is approved for RTS. It is neither necessary to have an additional inspection, nor is it necessary to contact the disapproving inspector. If the aircraft is on a progressive inspection program, the inspection statement changes slightly from the statement referenced earlier by adding a reference to both a routine inspection and a detailed inspection. Refer to explanatory text to 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.15 for a definition of these terms. Inspections accomplished in accordance with other inspection program requirements must identify the particular program and the part of the program the inspection completed. Section 43.12, Maintenance Records, Falsification, Reproduction, or Alteration. The aviation community relies heavily on trust and honesty in both oral and written communication. The maintenance log entries described in 14 CFR Part 43, Sections 43.9 and 43.11 provide the documentation trail relied upon by aircraft owners, pilots, and technicians regarding the aircraft's maintenance history. Falsification of these records is potentially dangerous to the personnel who rely on the accuracy of these records. This section identifies that fraudulent entries are unacceptable. If someone commits such an act, that action is the basis for suspension or revocation of the appropriate certificate, authorization, or approval. A technician who is encouraged by his or her employer, or by anyone else, to falsify records in any way should remember this comment, companies come and go, but my signature lasts a lifetime. I will not use it inappropriately. Section 43.13, Performance Rules, General, this section deals with the specific requirements for conducting maintenance. Note, this section best reflects the relationship between the FAR's numbering of acts and the regulations they are related to. Paragraph 3 on the covered page of Act 43.13-2b, Acceptable Methods, Techniques, and Practices, Aircraft Alterations, dated March 3, 2008 states, 
Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 14 CFR, Part 43, Section 43.13a states that each person performing maintenance, alteration, or preventive maintenance on an aircraft, engine, propeller, or appliance must use the methods, techniques, and practices prescribed in the current manufacturer's maintenance manual or instructions for continued airworthiness prepared by its manufacturer, or other methods, techniques, or practices acceptable to the administrator, except as noted in Section 43.16. Figure 2-9, although not all acts are linked this directly, there is a definite relationship between acts and companion regulations. Refer to the text in this chapter on acts for additional information. Aircraft maintenance technicians AMTS are highly skilled personnel, because aviation maintenance work requires great attention to detail. The complexity of technology on today's aircraft demands a significant level of communication to properly accomplish maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, or alteration. This communication frequently comes in written form, that is, manufacturer's maintenance manuals or ECA. If neither of these documents provide the guidance the technician needs to perform maintenance, either Act 43.13, Act 43.13-1, or Act 43.13-2, contain examples of other methods, techniques, or practices acceptable to the administrator that may be sufficient. However, these acts specifically state that the information is applicable to non-pressurized areas of civil aircraft weighing 12,500 pounds gross weight or less. In addition to the documentation, the technician must also use the proper tools, equipment, and test apparatus that ensures that the work complies with accepted industry practices. If the test equipment specified by the manufacturer is not available, equipment that is determined to be equivalent and 2-18 U.S. Department of Transportation Federal Aviation Administration Advisory Circular Subject Acceptable Methods Date The 3rd of March 2008 ACNO 43.13-2B Techniques and Practices Aircraft Initiated by of 300 Alterations 1. Purpose this advisory circular act contains methods, techniques, and practices acceptable to the administrator for the inspection and alteration on non-pressurized areas of civil aircraft at 12,500 pounds gross weight or less. This act is for use by mechanics, repair stations, and other certificated entities. This data generally pertains to minor alterations. However, the alteration data here and may be used as approved data for major alterations when the act chapter, page, and paragraph are listed in Block 8 of FAR Form 337 when the user has determined that it is a. appropriate to the product being altered, b. directly applicable to the alteration being made, and c not contrary to manufacturer's data. 2. Cancellation. Act 43.13-2A, Acceptable Methods, Techniques, and Practices Aircraft Alterations, dated January 1, 1977, is cancelled. 3. Reference. Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 14 CFR, Part 43, Paragraph 43.13-A, states that each person performing maintenance, alteration, or preventive maintenance on an aircraft, engine, propeller, or appliance must use the methods, techniques, and practices prescribed in the current manufacturer's maintenance manual or instructions for continued airworthiness prepared by its manufacturer, or other methods, techniques, or practices acceptable to the administrator, except as noted in Paragraph 43.16. Five inspectors are prepared to answer questions that may arise in this regard. Persons engaged in the inspection and alteration of civil aircraft should be familiar with 14 CFR Part 43, Maintenance, Preventive Maintenance, Rebuilding, and Alterations, and Part 65, Subparts A, D, and D of Certification, Airmen other than flight crew members, and applicable air within this requirements under which the aircraft was type certificated. 4. Comments invited. Comments regarding this act should be directed to dot slash far at an Aircraft Maintenance Division, 800 Independence Avenue, Washington, D.C. 20591, Fax 202-267-5115. Original signed by. James J. Ballot Director Flight Standard Service. Figure 2-9. Act 43.13-2B Excerpt. 2-19. Acceptable to the administrator may be used. The technician should be cautious, however, as proving the equivalence of test equipment may not be as simple as it seems. Air carriers, commercial, scheduled airlines operating under 14 CFR Part 121, the commuter slash on demand aircraft operating under 14 CFR Part 135, and foreign air carriers and operators of US registered aircraft under 14 CFR Part 129 may use the maintenance manual required by the operations specifications to comply with the requirements of this section. The operator must provide a continuous airworthiness maintenance and inspection program acceptable to the administrator. Section 43.15 Additional Performance Rules for Inspections. This section presents general comments concerning the responsibility of conducting an inspection and then provides details of three separate conditions. They are rotorcraft, annual and 100-hour inspections, and progressive inspections. 1. Rotorcraft, if the rotorcraft is being inspected, specific items, such as rotor transmissions and drive shafts, must be inspected. 2. Annual and 100-hour inspections, when performing an annual or 100-hour inspection, a checklist must be used. This checklist may be a personal one or one from the manufacturer. Either way, it must include the scope and detail of the inspection in Appendix D. Specific engine performance is also required to be tested or monitored as part of RTS for an annual or 100-hour inspection. This applies whether the aircraft is reciprocating or turbine-powered. 3. Progressive inspection. If a progressive inspection is being conducted, it must be preceded by a complete aircraft inspection. Note, a progressive inspection is the result of breaking down the large task of conducting a major inspection into smaller tasks that can be accomplished periodically without taking the aircraft out of service for an extended period of time. Two new definitions are also presented, routine and detailed. A routine inspection is a visual examination or check of the item, but no disassembly is required. A detailed inspection is a thorough examination of the item, including disassembly. 
The overhaul of a component is considered to be a detailed inspection. If the aircraft is away from a station where inspections are normally conducted, an appropriately rated mechanic, a certificated repair station, or the manufacturer of the aircraft may perform inspections in accordance with the procedures and using the forms of the person who would otherwise perform the inspection. Section 43.16, Airworthiness Limitations. The technician performing inspection or maintenance actions on an aircraft must be certain that he or she has all appropriate data available. Each person performing an inspection or other maintenance specified in an airworthiness limitations section of a manufacturer's maintenance manual or instructions for continued airworthiness shall perform the inspection or other maintenance in accordance with that section, or in accordance with operations specifications approved by the administrator under Part 121 or 135, or an inspection program approved under 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.409E. Because, as required by 14 CFR Part 21, Section 21.50, must also be consulted when available. Since 1998, the FAR has required ECAS to be generated for all major alterations that are accomplished by the field approval process. This section specifies that the technician is responsible to perform inspections or maintenance specified in an airworthiness limitation in accordance with all the preceding instructions. Section 43.17, Maintenance, Preventive Maintenance, or Alterations Performed on U.S. Aeronautical Products by Certain Canadian Persons. This section was significantly revised in 2005 as the result of a bilateral aviation safety agreement BASA, between the United States and Canada. This section of 14 CFR Part 43 defines some terms and gives specific limitations as to what an aircraft maintenance engineer and is the Canadian equivalent to the U.S. A&P may do to maintain U.S. registered aircraft located in Canada. It also provides similar limitations for an approved maintenance organization. AMA is the Canadian equivalent to the U.S. certified repair stations. Appendix, A to alterations, major repairs, and preventive maintenance. This appendix provides a comprehensive, but not exclusive, list of subjects. For instance, paragraph A is titled major alteration and is further subdivided as follows. Airframe. Power plant. Propeller. Appliance. This same subdivision is used in paragraph B, major repairs. Paragraph C, preventive maintenance, identifies those maintenance actions that are defined as preventive maintenance, provided the maintenance does not involve complex assembly operations. Preventive maintenance work may be accomplished by the holder of at least a private pilot certificate provided he or she is the owner or operator of that aircraft, and it is not operated under 14 CFR Part 121, 129, or 135. 2-20. Appendix, recording of major repairs and major alterations. In most cases when a major repair or alteration is accomplished, FAR Form 337, major repair or alteration, is completed at least in duplicate with the original going to the aircraft owner and a copy sent to the FAR Aircraft Registration Branch in Oklahoma City where all civil aircraft information is compiled and retained. Note, historically, the second copy was sent to the local FAR FSDO within 48 hours after RTS. This copy is reviewed by an ASI and then forwarded by the FSDO to FAR Records in Oklahoma City. However, in the fall of 2005, the FAR made a significant change to this submittal process and now requires the technician to submit the Form 337 directly to the Aircraft Registration Branch in Oklahoma City. Although a third copy is not required, it makes good business sense for the technician or certified repair station to keep a copy of the work that was accomplished. However, if your certificated Part 145 repair station completes a major repair, it may provide the customer with a signed copy of the work order and a maintenance release signed by an authorized representative of the repair station, instead of the FAR Form 337. If the major repair or alteration was done by an AM or AMO, the copy normally provided to the FAR FSDO is sent directly to the FAR Aircraft Registration Branch. However, if extended range tanks are installed in either passenger or cargo compartments, the technician must generate a third FAR Form 337 for the modification. This copy must be placed and retained in the aircraft. Refer to 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.417D, Appendix C, Reserved. Appendix C is reserved for future use and therefore currently contains no information. Appendix, Cope and Detail of Items to be included in Annual and 100-Hour Inspections. Some important items to consider in this appendix are 1. The list of items and areas to be inspected are exactly the same for an annual as a 100-hour inspection. The difference between the inspections is in who is authorized to perform and approve the aircraft for RTS following the inspection. Refer to 14 CFR Part 65, Section 65.95A2 that states that an EOM must perform an annual inspection. 2. The aircraft and engine must be cleaned prior to conducting the inspection. 3. Any miscellaneous item not covered in a detailed list provided must also be inspected for improper installation and operation. 4. There are eight specific areas identified for detailed inspection. They are the fuselage hull group, cabin slash flight deck group, engine slash nacelle group, landing gear group, wing slash center section group, image assembly, propeller group, and the radio group. Appendix, multimeter system test and inspection. This is commonly referred to as the 411th test. Refer to 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.411 that requires that no person may operate an aircraft in controlled airspace under if unless the aircraft has had this test completed successfully within the preceding 24 months. This section requires detailed testing of the static pressure system, the altimeter, and the automatic pressure altitude reporting equipment, and that the test information be recorded in the maintenance logs and on the altimeter. Appendix, DC Transponder Tests and Inspections. This is commonly referred to as the 413th test. Refer to 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.413, which requires that no person may use a transponder unless it has had this test completed successfully within the preceding 24 months. This section specifies complex sets of tests, which may be accomplished either as a bench test or by using portable test equipment. 
Major categories of the testing required are radio reply frequency, suppression, receiver sensitivity, radio frequency peak output power, and no test when applicable. Upon completion of testing, proper entries must be made in the maintenance record. 14 CFR Part 91, General Operating and Flight Rules. Subpart, General. As mentioned in the brief overview of the regulation portion earlier in this chapter, this part is actually addressing the operation of the aircraft. For example, 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.7a states no person may operate a civil aircraft unless it is in an airworthy condition. We learned earlier that this term means that the aircraft conforms to its approved type design and is in condition for safe operation. When the pilot performs a pre-flight inspection, he or she is making a determination concerning the condition for safe operation. The pilot does not usually determine conformity to type design unless he or she performs a review of the maintenance records. However, since that is fundamental to the definition of airworthy, it is still part of their responsibility. Therefore, a professional and ethical technician wants to help the customer understand his or her responsibilities in maintaining and documenting the airworthiness of the aircraft. 2-21 Subpart, Maintenance, Preventive Maintenance, and Alterations Section 91.401, Applicability Although this subpart describes in general the rules regarding maintenance, preventive maintenance, and alteration, certain sections do not apply if the aircraft is operated in accordance with 14 CFR Part 121, 125, 129, or 135. Section 91.403, General the owner slash operator holds the primary responsibility for maintaining the aircraft in airworthy condition. This includes compliance with all applicable ads and is the reason that the FAR sends new AD notes to the registered owners of the affected aircraft. All maintenance performed must be accomplished in accordance with 14 CFR Part 43. Compliance with the appropriate manufacturer maintenance manuals and ECA is also required. Mandatory replacement times, inspection intervals, and related procedures as outlined in the FAR. Approved operations specifications must also be complied with. Section 91.405, Maintenance Required. The owner slash operator is required to have the appropriate inspections made and to have discrepancies repaired in accordance with Part 43. He or she is also required to ensure that the appropriate entries have been made in the maintenance records. Any inoperative instruments or equipment must be properly placarded as inoperative. Section 91.407, Operation After Maintenance, Preventive Maintenance, or Alteration. Whenever the aircraft has undergone maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding or alteration, it must have been approved for RTS and a proper entry made in the maintenance records. If the maintenance that was done could have appreciably changed the flight characteristics, an appropriately rated pilot must perform an operational flight check of the aircraft and must make an entry of the flight in the maintenance records. If ground testing and inspection can show conclusively that the maintenance has not adversely affected the flight characteristics, no flight test is required. Section 91.409, Inspections. This paragraph identifies various types of inspection applicable to the civilian aircraft fleet. Paragraph A defines the requirement for an annual inspection. However, there are certain exceptions to this regulation. 1. An aircraft that carries a special flight permit, a current experimental certificate, or a light spot or provisional air within this certificate. 2. An aircraft inspected in accordance with an approved aircraft inspection program under Part 125 or 135 of this chapter and so identified by the registration number and the operations specifications of the certificate holder having the approved inspection program. 3. An aircraft subject to the requirements of Paragraph D or E of this section. 4. 4. Turbine-powered rotorcraft when the operator elects to inspect the rotorcraft in accordance with Paragraph E of this section. Annual inspections are usually the inspection method associated with small general aviation aircraft. If this same aircraft is used for hire, including flight instruction for hire, then the aircraft must also be inspected every 100 hours of time in service. This requirement for a 100-hour inspection to be conducted on an aircraft may be exceeded by as much as 10 hours if the aircraft is en route to reach a facility that will be conducting the inspection. Any time accrued between 100 and 110 hours is subtracted from the hours remaining before the next 100-hour inspection. Since aircraft used the hire only generate revenue when they are flying, any time that the aircraft is down for inspection can result in a loss of income for the owner slash operator. Therefore, the FAR has made provision to minimize the impact of the 100 hour and annual inspection requirement. The owner slash operator may petition the local FSDO for approval of a progressive inspection program. This program breaks the complete inspection of the aircraft into smaller, less time consuming steps. Refer to 14 CFR Part 43, Appendix D. This inspection may be either performed or supervised by a technician holding a near. The program must ensure at all times that the aircraft is airworthy. The owner slash operator must submit an inspection schedule with his or her application to the FAR. This schedule must identify the time intervals, hours or days when routine and detailed inspections are to be accomplished. Refer to 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.15. Just as with a 100-hour inspection, a 10-hour maximum extension of a specified inspection interval is allowed if the aircraft is en route. A change in the inspection interval is also allowed for changes in service experience. If the progressive inspection is discontinued, the aircraft is again subject to the traditional annual and 100-hour inspections. Other inspection programs that may be applicable to other aircraft are a continuous airworthiness inspection program and an approved aircraft inspection program are up. The former program is applicable to either a Part 121 or 135 carrier, but the latter program is limited to Part 135. 2-22 Operators only. Finally, the owner slash operator may use either a current inspection program recommended by the aircraft manufacturer or one established by the owner slash operator and approved by the local FSDO. Any subsequent changes to that program must also be approved by the local FSDO. There may be an instance when the operator of an aircraft wishes to change from one type of inspection program to another. In that case, the time in service, calendar times, or cycles of operation from the current program must be carried over to the subsequent program. 
Section 91.411, Altimeter System and Altitude Reporting Equipment Tests and Inspections. Commonly referred to as the 411 test, this section specifies the requirements for testing the static pressure system, each altimeter instrument, and each automatic pressure altitude reporting system every 24 calendar months. The static system must also be tested any time it has been opened and closed, except for the normal use of the system drain and alternate static system pressure valves. If the automatic pressure altitude reporting system of the air traffic control act transponder is either installed or subjected to maintenance actions, the system must also be tested per appendix C of 14 CFR Part 43. Due to the inherent design and accuracy of this system, only the aircraft manufacturer, a properly rated repair station, or a certificated airframe mechanic may perform these tests. The airframe technician may only perform the inspection and test of the static pressure system. Calibration and maintenance of related instruments is specifically prohibited to the technician by the language of 14 CFR Part 65, Section 65.81 and specifically allowed in 14 CFR Part 145, Section 145.59 for repair stations holding an instrument rating. So items are considered to be tested and inspected as of the date they were manufactured. The maximum altitude that the system was tested is the maximum altitude that the aircraft can be flown instrument flight rules if in controlled airspace. Section 91.413, at transponder tests and inspections. This 413 test is the other test required every 24 months. Whenever the act transponder is installed or has undergone maintenance, the complete system must be tested and inspected in accordance with Appendix C of 14 CFR Part 43. The transponder itself must be tested and inspected in accordance with Appendix F of 14 CFR Part 43. As with the 411 test, only certain persons are authorized to conduct the tests. They are the manufacturer of the aircraft, a properly certificated repair station, or the holder of a continuous airworthiness maintenance program under 14 CFR Part 121 or 135. Section 91.415, Changes to Aircraft Inspection Programs. If the FAR determines that the inspection program established and approved under either 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.409 or 91.1109 must be revised to ensure continued safety and adequacy of the program, the owner slash operator must make the necessary changes as identified by the administrator. If the owner slash operator desires to contest this request, they must petition the FAR to reconsider their request to change the program within 30 days of receiving the change request from the FAR. Section 91.417, Maintenance Records. The understanding and implementation of this section is fundamental to the aircraft industry, in general, and the aircraft owner slash operator, in specific. A professional maintenance technician must be knowledgeable of this section and be able to help the owner slash operator understand it. Figure 2-10, this section identifies four types of records, two are quite specific, paragraphs A and D, and two are more general, A1 and A2. Paragraph A refers to the 411 and 413 testing that requires testing every 24 months. Therefore, records must be kept for that length of time. Paragraph D refers to the installation of fuel tanks in a cabin or cargo area. The FAR Form 337 authorizing this installation must be kept on board the aircraft all the time. Note, other than this paragraph, there is no requirement that the maintenance records of the aircraft be carried on the aircraft. In fact, there are very logical reasons to not do so in most cases. The two biggest concerns are damaged or lost records. It is much safer to retain the logs in a filing system in the office. It is also a very wise idea to have the logbook copied or scanned and retained at a separate location should a catastrophic event, fire, flood, tornado, hurricane, and so forth occur at the site the original records are retained. Subparagraph A1 then lists those records that are later defined in B1 as being retained for one year or until the work is repeated or superseded. Subparagraph A2 specifies the records that are permanent records and are identified in subparagraph B2 as those that must be transferred with the aircraft. Refer to the chart for further clarification. Figure 2-10, paragraph C, requires that all of the maintenance records mandated by this section be made available upon request to the administrator or any authorized representative of the NTSB. Furthermore, the owner slash operator must provide the Form 337 required to be aboard the aircraft whenever additional fuel tanks are installed in either the passenger compartment or the baggage compartment, per paragraph D, to any law enforcement officer upon request. 2-23, section 91.419, transfer of maintenance records 3, investigation of aviation accidents. When an aircraft is sold, it is logical that the records are transferred with it. They may be either in plain language or coded. The purchaser may elect to permit the seller to retain the actual records. However, if that occurs, the purchaser, now the current owner slash operator, must still make these records available to either the FAR or the NTSB upon request. Section 91.421, Rebuilt Engine Maintenance Records. This section presents the term zero time. Although not truly given as a definition, the wording of the regulation is very clear that an aircraft engine, when rebuilt by the engine manufacturer or an agency approved by the manufacturer, may be given a new maintenance record showing no previous operating history. This new record must include a signed statement with the date it was rebuilt, any changes incorporated by compliance with AD notes, and compliance with any other manufacturer's SB. Civil Air Regulations, CAR, prior to 1926, access to flying was uncontrolled. No licensing or certification was required. By the middle of the 1920s, it became obvious that unregulated private and commercial flying was dangerous. There was a growing awareness and acceptance that regulation could improve safety and encourage growth in aviation. Therefore, in 1926, the aviation industry requested Congress to enact federal legislation to regulate civil aviation. Thus, the Air Commerce Act of 1926 provided for the 1. Establishment of airways 2. Development of aviation aids 4. Licensing of pilots 5. Certification of aircraft The Civil Air Regulations cars were part of the original certification basis for aircraft first certified in the 1940s, 1950s, and 1960s by the Civil Aviation Authority CAA. 
Therefore, the cars may still be needed as a reference for these older aircraft or as a standard for minor changes to older aircraft designs. Figure 2-11, car 3, airplane airworthiness, normal, utility, aerobatic, and restricted purpose categories. As the name implies, this specific regulation is the basis for the current 14 CFR Part 23 regulation, figure 2-1. It has the following subpart categories. Worthiness requirements, light requirements, general, strength requirements, general, design and construction, general, oil plant installations, reciprocating engines, equipment. Some examples of car 3 aircraft are Piper Par 22, Par 28, Par 32, and Cessna 182, 195, and 310. Note, the car acronym actually has two interpretations, civil air regulations and Canadian aviation regulations. The technician must clearly understand the difference and recognize when one or the other is appropriate. 14 CFR 91.417 Maintenance Records Sections 91.411 and 91.413 Paragraph A. Retain for two years. Paragraph D. Far Form 337 for extended range fuel tanks and cabin or cargo. Keep on board a slash C. Paragraph A. 1. Maintenance. Preventive maintenance. Alterations and all inspections. Description of work. Date of completion. Signature and certificate number of person approving RTS. Time since last overhaul for items that are required to overhaul. Current inspection status. Current status of applicable ads. Copies of Form 337. Paragraph A. 2. Records of total time in service for a slash F. Each engine, each propeller and each rotor. Current status of life limited parts of a slash F engine, prop, rotor or ramp. Paragraph B. 3. List of defects furnished to the owner slash operator in accordance with section 43.11. Retained until defects are repaired and the slash C is approved for RTS. Paragraph B. 2. Retain and transfer with a slash C. Figure 2-10. Maintenance records. 2-24. Predecessor regulations to the Federal Aviation Regulations 14 CFR Aeronautical Bulletins. 7A Airworthiness Requirements for Aircraft 7F Airworthiness Requirements for Aircraft Components and Accessories 7G Airworthiness Requirements for Engines and Propellers 7H Alteration and Repair of Aircraft 7J Special Requirements for Airline Aircraft 14 Relative Lift Distribution in any biplane 14 Requirements for Approved Type Certificates 26 Design Information for Aircraft Civil Air Regulations Car, Car 1 Certification, Identification, and Marking of Aircraft and Related Products Car 2 Aircraft Identification Mark Car 3 Airplane Airworthiness, Normal, Utility, Acrobatic, and Restricted Purpose Categories Car 4 Airplane Airworthiness Car 4 B Airplane Airworthiness, Transport Categories Car 6 Rotorcraft Airworthiness, Normal Category Car 7 Rotorcraft Airworthiness, Transport Categories Car 8 Aircraft Airworthiness, Restricted Category Car 9 Aircraft Airworthiness, Limited Category Car 10 Certification and Approval of Import Aircraft and Related Products Car 13 Aircraft Engine Airworthiness Car 14 Aircraft Propeller Airworthiness Car 18 Maintenance, Repair, and Alteration of 30 i aircraft and of aircraft engines, propellers and instruments, car 40 scheduled interstate air carrier 30 i and operation rules, special car 425C provisional 30 i and operation of aircraft, special car 406 application of transport category performance requirements to C46 type aircraft, civil aeronautics manual, came, came 1 30 i identification, and marking of aircraft and related products, came 2 production certificates, came 3 up lane airworthiness, normal, utility, and acrobatic categories came for a airplane airworthiness, came for B airplane airworthiness, transport categories came six rotorcraft airworthiness, came seven rotorcraft airworthiness, transport categories came eight aircraft airworthiness, restricted category came nine aircraft airworthiness, limited category came ten certification and approval of import aircraft and related products came thirteen aircraft engine airworthiness, came fourteen aircraft repair airworthiness, came eighteen maintenance, repair, and alteration of airframes, power plants, propellers, and appliances. Figure 2-11. Predecessor regulations to the Federal Aviation Regulations 14 CFR. 2-25. Car 4, it lay in in this manufacturer of the product is a good way to start gathering this regulation was originated in 1936 and last amended on the facts concerning the product in question. Refer to the December 15th, 1952. The subparts included in this regulation current version of Act 21-29, detecting and reporting are worthiness requirements, definitions, structural loading conditions, general structural requirements, roof of structure, detail design and construction, equipment, oil plant installation, performance, isolaneous requirements. Initially, this regulation was the basis for establishing the design requirements for virtually all produced aircraft in the 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s. Eventually, Car 3 evolved as the regulatory material specific to small aircraft, and Car 4A and B focused on regulatory requirements for large aircraft. It is very important to review the DCDS for each aircraft. For example, the Cessna 140 was certified as a land plane under Car 3, but under Car 4A as a ski plane or sea plane. Another example of a more current and larger aircraft is the Gulf Stream 1159 and 1159A. The former is certified under Car 4B, but the latter is certified to 14 CFR Part 25. Suspected unapproved parts sub, there are four types of aircraft parts. 1. Good parts with good paperwork. 2. Good parts with bad paperwork. 3. Bad parts with good, bogus paperwork. 4. Bad parts with bad paperwork. Fephistoftosa listed represents properly authorized parts that, when properly installed, are approved parts, and the aircraft can be returned to service. The last of those listed represent unauthorized and unapproved parts. The technician should be alert for these and must never install them on an aircraft. The center two categories of parts represent suspected unapproved parts. If either the physical part or the paperwork associated with the part is questionable, it is best to contact the shop foreman, shift supervisor, or the assigned quality individual to discuss your concerns. 
Suspected unapproved parts subs should be segregated and quarantined until proper disposition can be determined. Contacting the suspected unapproved parts for additional information. Current contact information for submitting a sub notification can be found at www.faa.gov. Other FAR documents. Advisory Circulars Act. Act refers to a type of publication offered by the FAR to provide guidance for compliance with airworthiness regulations. They provide guidance such as methods, procedures, and practices acceptable to the administrator for complying with regulations. Acts may also contain explanations of regulations, other guidance material, best practices, or information useful to the aviation community. They do not create or change a regulatory requirement. The Act system became effective in 1962. It provides a single, uniform, agency-wide system that the FAR uses to deliver advisory material to FAR customers, industry, the aviation community, and the public. Unless incorporated into a regulation by reference, the content of Acts are not binding on the public. Acts are issued in a numbered subject system corresponding to the subject areas of the FAR's 14 CFR, Chapter 1, Federal Aviation Administration, and Chapter 3, Commercial Space Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration, Department of Transportation, Parts 400-450. An act is issued to provide guidance and information in a designated subject area or to show a method acceptable to the administrator for complying with a related Federal Aviation Regulation. Because of their close relationship to the regulations, acts are arranged in a numbered system that corresponds to the subject areas of the CFRS. In some series, consecutive numbers may be missing. These numbers were either assigned to acts still in preparation that will be issued at a later date or were assigned to acts that have been cancelled. The Act Numbering System There are three parts to an Act Number, as in 25-42C. The first part of the number identifies the subject matter area of the Act. This corresponds to the part of the FAR's regulations. In the above example, this would be Part 25. The second part of the number, beginning with the dash, is a sequential number within each subject area. In the above example, this would be the 42nd Act relating to Part 25. 2-26 the third part of the number is a letter assigned by the originating office showing the revision sequence if an act is revised. The first version of an act is not a revision letter. In the above example, this is third revision, as designated by the C, figure 2-12, Airworthiness Directives, AD, in accordance with 14 CFR Part 39, the fire issues as in response to deficiencies and or unsafe conditions found in aircraft, engines, propellers, or other aircraft parts. Ads require that the relevant problem must be corrected on all aircraft or aircraft parts using the same design. Ads are initiated as either proposed, corrective, or final telegraphic via the Federal Register. The Federal Register is the official daily publication of the United States government. It is the printed method of informing the public of laws that are enacted or will be enacted. Electronic versions of ads are available from the Federal Register and from the Regulatory and Guidance Library. You can search by manufacturer, model, or AD number. All ads are incorporated by reference into Part 39 and are considered final. Ads must be followed to remain in compliance with the FAR. Once an AD has been issued, a person slash company is authorized to use the affected aircraft or part only if it has been corrected in accordance with the AD. Types of airworthiness directives, AD, three types of ads are issued. Notice of proposed rulemaking, NPRM, followed by a final rule. Final rule. Request for comments. Emergency ads. The standard AD process is to issue an NPRM followed by a final rule. After an unsafe condition is discovered, a proposed solution is published as an NPRM and solicits public comment on the proposed action. After the comment period closes, the final rule is prepared, taking into account all substantive comments received with the rule perhaps being changed as warranted by the comments. The preamble to the final rule AD provides response to the substantive comments or states there were no comments received. In certain cases, the critical nature of an unsafe condition may warrant the immediate adoption of a rule without prior notice and solicitation of comments. This is an exception to the standard process. If time for the terminating action to be accomplished is too short to allow for public comment, that is, less than 60 days, then a finding of impracticability is justified for the terminating action, and it can be issued as an immediately adopted rule. The immediately adopted rule is published in the Federal Register with a request for comments. The final rule AD may be changed later if substantive comments are received. An emergency AD is issued when an unsafe condition exists that requires immediate action by an owner slash operator. The intent of an emergency AD is to rapidly correct an urgent safety deficiency. An emergency AD may be distributed by fax, letter, or other methods. It is issued and effective to only the people who actually receive it. This is known as actual notice. All known owners and operators of affected U.S. registered aircraft, or those aircraft that are known to have an affected product installed, are sent a copy of an emergency AD. To make the AD effective to all persons, a follow-up publication of the final rule AD in the Federal Register is critical. This final rule AD must be identical to the emergency AD and is normally published in the Federal Register within 30 days of the emergency AD issue. AD content. Generally, ads include a description of the unsafe condition, the product that the AD applies to, the required corrective action or operating limitations or both, the AD effective date, a compliance time, where to go for more information, information on alternative methods of compliance with the requirements of the AD, AD number, as have a three-part number designator. The first part is the calendar year of issuance. The second part is the weekly period of the year when the number is assigned. The third part is issued sequentially within each weekly period. Applicability and compliance. The AD subject line specifically identifies the TC holder of the aircraft or products affected by the AD, the specific models affected and any special considerations, such as specific installed part numbers or modifications, are listed in the AD applicability section. In order to find all applicable ads for a specific product, you must search for ads on the product, aircraft, engine, S, propeller, or any installed appliance. If there are multiple series under the aircraft or engine model, you must also search for ads applicable to the model, as well as the specific series of that model. The final determination of ads applicable to a particular product can only be made by a thorough examination of the 2-27 Advisory Circular Numbering System 1. General 
The advisory circular numbers relate to the first subchapter title and correspond to the parts, and when appropriate, to the specific sections of the Federal Aviation Regulations. 2. General and specific subject numbers. The subject numbers and related subject areas are as follows. General subject number 1, specific subject number 2, subject. General subject number 1, specific subject number 2, subject. 00 zero general. 1. Definitions and abbreviations. 10. Procedural rules. 11. General rule making procedures. 13. Investigation and enforcement procedures. 20. Aircraft. 21. Certification procedures for products and parts. 23. Air within this standards. Normal, utility, and acrobatic category airplanes. 25. Air within this standards. Transport category airplanes. 27. Air within this standards. Normal category rotorcraft. 29. Air within this standards. Transport category rotorcraft. 31. Air within this standards. Manned free balloons. 33. Air within this standards. Aircraft engines. 34. Fuel venting and exhaust emission requirements for turbine engine powered airplanes. 35. Air within this standards. Propellers. 36. Noise standards. Aircraft type and air within this certification. 39. Air within this directives. 43. Maintenance. Preventive maintenance. Rebuilding and alteration. 45. Identity Identification and registration marking 47 aircraft registration 49 recording of aircraft titles and security documents 60 airmen 61 certification pilots and flight instructors 63 certification flight crew members other than pilots 65 certification airmen other than flight crew members 67 medical standards and certification 70 airspace 71 designation of federal airways aerial routes controlled airspace and reporting point 73 special use airspace 75 establishment of jet routes and area high routes 77 objects affecting navigable airspace 90 air traffic and general operating rules 91 General Operating and Flight Rules 93 Special Air Traffic Rules and Airport Traffic Patterns 95 If Altitudes 97 Standard Instrument Approach Procedures 99 Security Control of Air Traffic 101 Mord Balloons, Kites, Unmanned Rockets and Unmanned Free Balloons 103 Ultra Light Vehicles 105 Parachute Jumping 107 Airport Security 108 Airplane Operator Security 109 Indirect Air Carrier Security 119 Certification, Air Carriers and Commercial Operators 120 Air Carriers, Air Travel Clubs and Operators for Compensation or Hire, Certification and Operations 121 Certification and Operations, Domestic, Flag, and Supplemental Air Carriers and Commercial Operators of Large Aircraft. 125 Certification and Operations, Airplanes having a seating capacity of 20 or more passengers or a maximum payload capacity of 6,000 pounds or more. 127 Certification and Operations of Scheduled Air Carriers with Helicopters. 129 Operations of Foreign Air Carriers. 133 Motorcraft External Load Operations. 135 Air Taxi Operators and Commercial Operators. 137 Agricultural Aircraft Operations. 139 Certification and Operations, Land Airport Serving Cab Certificated Air Carriers. 140 Schools and Other Certificated Agencies. 141 Pilot Schools, 143 Ground Instructors, 145 Repair Stations, 147 Aviation Maintenance Technician Schools. 150 Airport Noise Compatibility Planning. 151 Federal Aid to Airports, 152 Airport Aid Program. Figure 2-12. List of Advisory Circular Numbers. 2-28. Advisory Circular Numbering System. General subject number 1, specific subject number 2, subject. General subject number 1, specific subject number 2, subject. 155 release of airport property from surplus property disposal restrictions 156 state block grant pilot program 157 notice of construction, alteration, activation, and deactivation of airports 158 passenger facilities charges 159 national capital airports 159 tenths Washington national airport 159 twentieth Dulles international airport 161 notice and approval of airport noise and access restrictions 169 expenditures of federal funds for non-military airports or air navigational facilities thereon 170 navigational facilities 170 Establishment and Discontinuance Criteria for Airport Traffic Control Tower Facilities 171 Non-Federal Navigation Facilities 180 Administrative Regulations 183 Representatives of the Administrator 185 Testimony by Employees and Production of Records in Legal Proceedings 187 Fees 189 Use of Federal Aviation Administration Communication System 190 Withholding Security Information 191 Withholding Security Information from Disclosure under the Air Transportation Security Act of 1974 198 Aviation Insurance Program 210 Flight Information 211 Aeronautical Charts and Flight Information Publications 212 Publication Specification, Charts and Publications 400 Commercial Space Transportation 440 Financial Responsibility 1. Based on Federal Aviation Regulation Subchapter Titles, excluding the 210 Series 2. Based on Federal Aviation Regulation Part Titles, excluding the 210 Series 3. Within the general subject number areas, specific selectivity in advisory circular mail lists is available corresponding to the applicable FAR parts. For example, under the 60 general subject area, separate mail lists for advisory circulars issued in the 61, 63, 65, or 67 series are available. An act numbered 60 goes to all numbers in a 60 series. When the volume of circulars in a series warrants a subsubject breakdown, the general number is followed by a slash and a subsubject number. Material in the 150 series, airports, is issued under the following subsubjects. 150 slash 5000 airport planning. 150 slash 5020 noise control and compatibility planning for airports. 150 slash 5100 Federal Aid Airport Program 150 slash 5150 Surplus Airport Property Conveyance Programs 
150-5190 Airport Compliance Program 150-5200 Airport Safety and Dash General 150-5210 Airport Safety Operations Recommended Training Standards Manning 150-5220 Airport Safety Equipment and Facilities 150-5230 Airport Ground Safety System 150-5240 Civil Airports Emergency Preparedness 150-5325 Influence of Aircraft Performance on Aircraft Design 150-5335 Runway, Taxway, and Apron Characteristics 150-5340 Airport Visual Aids 150-5345 Airport Lighting Equipment 150-5360 Airport Buildings 150-5370 Airport Construction 150-5380 Airport Maintenance 150-5390 Heliports 4. Individual Circular Identification Numbers Each circular has a subject number followed either by a dash and a consecutive number 135-15 or a period with a specific far section number followed by a dash and a consecutive number 135.169-2 identifying the individual circular. This consecutive number is not used again in the same subject series. Revised circulars have a letter A, B, C, etc. after the consecutive number to show complete revisions. Changes to circulars have CHG, 1, CHG, 2, CHG, 3, etc. after the identification number on pages that have been changed. The date on a revised page is changed to the date of the change transmittal. Figure 2-12. List of advisory circular numbers continued. 2-29. Ads and the product logbooks. No person may operate a product that an AD applies to, except in accordance with the requirements of the AD. Furthermore, the owner or operator of an aircraft is required by 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.403 to maintain the aircraft in compliance with all ads. The AD specifies a compliance time that relates to the effective date of the AD. That compliance time determines when the actions are required. Alternative method of compliance. Different approaches or techniques that are not specified in an AD can, after FAR approval, be used to correct an unsafe condition on an aircraft or aircraft product. Although the alternative was not known at the time the AD was issued, an alternative method may be acceptable to accomplish the intent of the AD. A compliance time that differs from the requirements of the AD can also be approved if the revised time period and approved alternative method provides an acceptable level of safety as the requirements of the AD. Special Air Within This Information Bulletin SAIM A Special Air Within This Information Bulletin SAIM is an information tool that the FAR uses to alert, educate, and make recommendations to the aviation community. SAIMs contain non-regulatory information and guidance that does not meet the criteria for an AD. Figure 2-13 Aircraft Specifications Specifications were originated during implementation of the Air Commerce Act of 1926. Specifications are FAR record-keeping documents issued for both type certificated and non-type certificated products that have been found eligible for U.S. Air Within This Certification Although they are no longer issued, specifications remain in effect and will be further amended. Specifications covering type certificated products may be converted to a DCDS at the option of the DC holder. However, to do so requires the TC holder to provide an equipment list. A specification is not part of a TC. Specifications are subdivided into five major groups as follows. 1. Group Type Certificate Aircraft, Engines, and Propellers. Covering standard, restricted, and limited types issued for domestic, foreign, and military surplus products. 2. Group 2. Aircraft, Engine, and Propeller Approvals. Covering domestic, foreign, and military surplus products constructed or modified between October 1, 1927, and August 22, 1938, all have met minimum airworthiness requirements without formal type certification. Such products are eligible for standard airworthiness certification as though they are TIPI certificated products. 3. Group 3, Aircraft, Engine, and Propeller Approvals. Covering domestic products manufactured prior to October 1, 1927, foreign products manufactured prior to June 20, 1931, and certain military surplus engines and propellers. All have met minimum air within this requirements of the Air Commerce Act of 1926 and implementing air commerce regulations without formal type certification. Such products are eligible for standard air within this certification as though they are type certificated products. 4. Group IV Engine Ratings Covering unapproved engines rated for maximum power and speed only, their use being limited to specific aircraft with maximum gross weights less than 1,000 pounds. Such engines are not eligible for independent air within this certification. These ratings are no longer issued. 5. Group Engine Approvals Covering military surplus engines meeting CAR 13 design requirements without formal type certification. Such engines are eligible for air within this certification as though they are type certificated engines. Cessna, 182T, locked rudder trim wheel, A4A 2721. A transit customer required help as his rudder trim was stuck in the full right position. The attending mechanics found the trim indicator pin had jumped free of its position and track and locked the trim wheel. After adjustment, the system was cycled to full extremes several times. The submitter notes they could replicate the jammed trim condition with extreme R slash H trim. This aircraft was the second 182 observed by these mechanics having this particular problem. Part total time, 31.9 hours. Supplemental type certificates, STC, when an aircraft is designed and the design is formally approved for manufacturing, the manufacturer is issued a type certificate, TC. The TC is issued by the FAR to signify the airworthiness of an aircraft design and may not be changed except by formal authorization of the FAR. This formal authorization supplements the original TC and is called the supplemental type certificate, STC. 
Therefore, the STC issued by the FAR approves a product, aircraft, engine, or propeller modification. Figure 2-14, the STC defines the product design change, states how the modification affects the existing type design, and lists serial number effectivity. It also identifies the certification basis listing specific regulatory compliance for the design change. Information contained in the certification basis is helpful for those applicants proposing subsequent product modifications and evaluating certification basis compatibility with other. 2-30. Fire Aviation Safety. Special Air Within This Information Bulletin. Subia, Fuselage, Seat Belt Mounting Bracket. Sample. Say in, CE 15-13. Date, April 15, 2015. This is information only. Recommendations aren't mandatory. Introduction. This special air within this information bulletin is to alert owners, operators, and maintenance technicians of an airworthiness concern with aluminum seat belt mounting brackets affecting all Cessna models 120 and 140 airplanes. Textron Aviation has issued service bulletin 725-03, dated February 17, 2015, to address this concern. At this time, the airworthiness concern is not an unsafe condition that would warrant airworthiness directive AD action under Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations 14 CFR Part 39. Background. On July 5, 2014, an accident occurred in Palmer, New York where the pilot seat belt mounting bracket, part number P-N 0425132, failed after the airplane overturned following departure from the runway. Although cause of the failed bracket has not been determined and the investigation is ongoing, it was noted that the original Cessna seat belt installation had been replaced with a 4.0 fabricator's harness per supplemental type certificate STC SA1429 GL in 2003. The failed bracket was made of aluminum. However, Cessna now only provides steel brackets as a replacement part for the aluminum brackets. Recommendations. The FAR recommends that owners, operators, and maintenance personnel of the affected airplanes replace aluminum brackets with steel brackets following Cessna Service Bulletin 725-03 dated February 17, 2015. To make the determination as to whether the bracket is made of aluminum or steel, a magnet may be used or look for evidence of iron oxide rust. For further information, contact Gary D. Park, Aerospace Engineer, Ace 118 W Phone, 316 946 4123, Fax 316 946 4107, Email Gary.Park at FAA.gov. For related service information, contact Cessna Aircraft Company, Customer Support Service, PO. Bot 7706, Wichita, Kansas, Telephone 316 517 5800. Fax 316 517 7271. Figure 2 13. Special air within this information bulletin. Sayib 1 2 31. Commander Premier Aircraft Corporation 20 Stanford Drive Farmington, Court 06032. A12 Somake, Commander Model 114. Sample. This certificate and supporting data, which is the basis for approval, shall remain in effect until surrendered, suspended, revoked, or a termination date is otherwise established by the administrator of the Federal Aviation Administration. Date of application February 9, 1990. Date of issuance, August 23, 1990. United States of America. Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration. Supplemental Type Certificate. Number. SA-7855 SW. This certificate issued to. Certifies that the change in the type design for the following product with limitations and conditions therefore as specified here on meets the airworthiness requirements of Part 23 of the Federal Aviation Regulations. Original Product Type Certificate Number. Description of Type Design Change. Installation of Macaulay D3-D3 to C41982 seconds and 5 propeller on Commander Model 114 airplane in accordance with Commander Aircraft Company. Installation instructions dated July 13, 1990. Revision dated August 22, 1990. Or later FAR approved revision. Limitations and conditions. FAR approved Commander Aircraft Company. Flight Manual Supplement dated August 23, 1990. Must accompany this modification. The installer must determine whether this design change is compatible with previously approved modifications. If the holder agrees to permit another person to use this certificate to alter a product, the holder must give the other person written evidence of that permission. Date reissued, March 3, 2006. Date amended, and 1. September 10, 1990. By direction of the administrator. Group of underscores, signature, Michelle M. Bruce Lee, Manager Airplane Certification Office, Southwest Region. Group of underscores, title, line of underscores, any alteration of this certificate is punishable by a fine of not exceeding $1,000, or imprisonment not exceeding three years, or both. Group of underscores, FAR form 8110-2-10-68, page 1 of 1. This certificate may be transferred in accordance with FAR 21.47. Figure 2-14. Supplemental type certificate, STC. 2-32. STC modifications. Refer to figure 2-15 for a listing of how TCS and STCS are numbered. Possession of the STC document does not constitute rights to the design data or installation of the modification. The STC and its supporting data, drawings, instructions, specifications, and so forth, are the property of the STC holder. You must contact the STC holder to obtain rights for the use of the STC. Type Certificate Data Sheets, DCDS. The TCDS is a formal description of the aircraft, engine, or propeller. It lists limitations and information required for type certification including ASP limits, weight limits, thrust limitations, and so forth. DCDSS and specifications set forth essential factors and other conditions that are necessary for U.S. Air within this certification. Aircraft, engines, and propellers that conform to a U.S. TC are eligible for U.S. Air within this certification when found to be in a condition for safe operation and ownership requisites are fulfilled. Figure 2-16, 
DCDSS were originated and first published in January 1958. Title 14 of the CFR Part 21, Section 21.41 indicates they are part of the TC. As such, a TCDS is evidence the product has been type certificated. Generally, DCDSS are compiled from details supplied by the TC holder. However, the farm may request and incorporate additional details when conditions warrant. Figure 2-17. Under federal law, no civil aircraft registered in the United States can operate without a valid airworthiness certificate. This certificate must be approved and issued by the FAR, and it is only issued if the aircraft and its engines, propellers, and appliances are found to be airworthy and meet the requirements of an FAR approved TC. The FAR issues a TC when a new aircraft, engine, propeller, and so forth is found to meet safety standards set forth by the FAR. The DCDS lists the specifications, conditions, and limitations that the airworthiness requirements were met under for the specified product, such as engine make and model, fuel type, engine limits, airspeed limits, maximum weight, minimum crew, and so forth. DCDSS are issued and revised as necessary to accommodate new models or other major changes in a certified product. DCDSS are categorized by TC holder and product type. FAR handbooks and manuals. The FAR publishes handbooks and manuals for beginners and aviation professionals. Publications are updated periodically to reflect new FAR regulations and technical developments. Figure 2-18 shows a list of aircraft and aviation handbooks and manuals available on the FAR website www.faa.gov. Non-FAR documents. Air Transport Association A4A Spec 2200. To standardize the technical data and maintenance activities on large and therefore complex aircraft, the A4A has established a classification of maintenance-related actions. These are arranged with sequential numbers assigned to A4A chapters. These chapters are consistent regardless of the large aircraft that is being worked on. Figure 2-19, Manufacturer's Published Data. The original equipment manufacturer OIM is usually the best source of information for the operation of and maintenance on a particular product. If the product is a TC'd or STC'd item, 14 CFR Part 21, Section 21.50 requires the holder of the design approval to provide one set of complete decas. Additional requirements for ECAs are specified in sections 23.1529, 25.1529, 27.1529, and 29.1529. These sections further refer the reader to 14 CFR Part 23, Appendix A, Part 25, Appendix H, Part 27, Appendix A, and Part 29, Appendix A. Regardless of the appendix referred to, the requirements in the appendix for the ECA are as follows. General, the aircraft ECA must contain instructions for continued airworthiness for each engine, propeller, or appliance and the interface of those appliances and products with the aircraft. Format, the ECA must be in the form of a manual or manuals appropriate to the data being provided. Content, the manual contents must be in English and must include the following. Introductory information, including an explanation of the airplane's features and data as necessary to perform maintenance or preventive maintenance. A description of the aircraft and its systems, including engine, propeller, and appliances. Basic operating information describing how the aircraft and its components are controlled. Servicing information with such detail as servicing parts, task capacities, types of fluid to be used, applicable pressures for the various systems, access panels for inspection and servicing, lubrication points, and types of lubricants to be used. The maintenance instructions must include the following data. Recommended schedule for cleaning, inspecting, adjusting, testing, and lubricating the various parts. Applicable wear tolerances. Recommended overhaul periods. 2-33. FAR project numbering and designators. FAR project numbers will use the following format. NEX where? AA is the two-letter designator for project type. See table 1 below. NNNN is the integer sequential number for the specified ACO. For example, 00146. He is the two-letter designator for the aircraft's certificationist ACO. See table 2 below. X is the one-letter designator for the product type. See table 3 below. As an example, DC 001258 will be a DC project assigned by the Atlanta ACO on a small airplane with the assigned number 00125. Table 1 and dash project type designated. Code description. Table 3 and dash product type designated. DC new type certificate. DC same new supplemental type certificate. STC at amended type certificate. Sir amended supplemental type certificate. ST special project for example. Approval under section 21.305 project. PM plus manufacturer approval. Ma, table 2 and dash aircraft certification. ACO designated. Code. Branch description. ACO 150 feet. Worth airplane certification as case 115 and Anchorage aircraft certification as at ace 115 A Atlanta aircraft certification as BRM 100 B Boeing Aviation Safety Oversight as Basu Boan 150 Boston aircraft certification as CH 112 Small Airplane Director at CH 115 C Chicago aircraft certification as Durham 100 D Denver aircraft certification as AN 140 Engine certification as GUS 100 G Gulf Stream Aviation Safety Oversight as Gasu Ibram 116 Transport Airplane Director at International Branch LA 100 Los Angeles aircraft certification as McCase 100 and Military certification as NYN 170 New York aircraft certification as RCS 170 feet. Worth road aircraft certification as SCS 190 feet. Worth special certification as Serum 100 S Seattle aircraft certification as WIA 115 W Wichita aircraft certification as. Code description. A small airplane B balloon engine G glider P propeller R rotorcraft S airship T transport airplane I experimental Q other or not product. Code description. Ed engine propeller R C D rotorcraft SAT small airplane TAD transport airplane. Code description. Bose Egg Boston Egg FTW Egg Fort Worth Egg MKC Egg Kansas City Egg LGB Egg Long Beach Egg Egg Seattle Egg Table 4 and Dash Director Act Designated Table 5 and Dash Aircraft Evaluation Group Designated 
As an example, DC001258 will be a DC project assigned by the Atlanta Paco on a small airplane with the assigned number 00125. Figure 2 15. Numbering system for type certificates, TCS, and supplemental type certificates, SDCS. Details for an inspection program that identifies diagrams for structural access plates. Both the frequency and the extent of the inspections, details for application of special inspection techniques necessary to provide for continued airworthiness, information concerning the application of protective, troubleshooting information treatments after inspection. The order and method for proper removal and information relative to the structural fasteners replacement of parts, list of any special tools needed, procedures for system testing during ground. Operations. 2-34. Sample. Figure 2-16. Type certificate. 2-35. Department of Transportation Federal Aviation Administration. 824C Revision 111. Beechcraft 200A100-1, U21J, 200CA200, C12A, 200C, TA200, C12, C200, DA200, C, U12, B, B200, A200, Quart, C12, D, B200, C, A200, Quart, FW, C12, D, B200, Quart, A200, Quart, C12, F, B200, DA200, Quart, RC12, D, 300A200, Quart, RC12, G, 300LW, A200, Quart, RC12, H, B300, A200, Quart, RC12, K, B300, C, A200, Quart, RC12, P, B300 C dash 12 W A200 quart RC 12 Q B300 C U12 W B200 C C12 F 1900 B200 C U12 M 1900 C B200 C C12 R 1900 C C12 J B200 C U12 F 1900 D B200 G T B200 C G T July the 21st 2015 Type Certificate Data Sheet No 824 C E This data sheet which is part of Type Certificate No 824C prescribes conditions and limitations under which the product for which the type certificate was issued meets the airworthiness requirements of the Federal Aviation Regulations. Type certificate holder, Beechcraft Corporation 10511E, Central Wichita, Kansas 67206. Type certificate holder record, Beech Aircraft Corporation transferred to Raytheon Aircraft Company on April 15, 1996. Raytheon Aircraft Company transferred to Hawker Beechcraft Corporation on March 26, 2007. Hawker Beechcraft Corporation transferred to Beechcraft Corporation on April 12, 2013. I. Model 200, Super King Air, Normal Category, Approved December 14, 1973, C Notes 10 and 11, Model A200C, U12B, Super King Air, Normal Category, Approved February 21, 1979, C Note 11, Model 200C, Super King Air, Normal Category, Approved February 21, 1979, C Note 11, Model B200, Super King Air, Normal Category, Approved February 13, 1981, C Notes 10 and 11, Model B200C, Super King Air, Normal Category, Approved February 13, 1981, C Notes 10 and 11, Model B200C, C12F, U12F, U12M, and C12R, Super King Air, Normal Category, approved February 13, 1981, C Notes 10, 11, and 12, for notes, refer to data pertinent to all Model 200 series. Engine 2 United Aircraft of Canada, Limited. Operate and Whitney PT6A-41. Turboprop per beach specification BS 22096 200 200C A200C page no 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 Rev. No. 111 101 104 97 82 97 82 99 97 101 111 104 96 101 101 110 Page no 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Rev. No. 111, 101, 82, 95, 91, 108, 111, 101, 101, 101, 101, 101, 178, 101, 110. Page no 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Rev. No. 104, 111, 110, 110, 111, 108, 111, 96, 100, 101, 101. Figure 2-17. Type certificate data sheet. 2-36. Aircraft. Aviation. Aircraft weight and balance handbook. Phi H8083-1A. Airplane flying handbook. Phi H8083-3A. IRM 8042-1C. Airworthiness Directives Manual Amp to Build Aircraft and Ultralight Flight Testing Handbook Aviation Maintenance Technician Handbook and Dash General Phi H8083-30 Aviation Maintenance Technician Handbook and Dash Airframe Phi H8083-31 Aviation Maintenance Technician Handbook and Dash Power Plant Phi H8083-32 Balloon Flying Handbook Phi H8083-11A Glider Flying Handbook Phi H8083-13A Parachute Trigger Handbook Phi H8083-17 Rotorcraft Flying Handbook Phi H8083-21 Aviation
Advanced Avionics Handbook, Phi 8083-6, Aerodynamics for Navy Aviators, Navy 00-80-80, Aeronautical Information Manual, Air Quality Handbook, Airship Pilot Manual, Airship Aerodynamics Technical Manual, Aviation Instructors Handbook, Phi 8083-9A, Balloon Safety Tips, False Lift, Shear, and Rotors, Phi P8740-39, Balloon Safety Tips, Power Lines and Thunderstorms, Phi P8740-34, Banner to Operations, Phi Slash FSI 8700-1, Flight Navigator Handbook, Phi 8083-18, Helicopter Flying Handbook, Phi 8800 83-21A Helicopter Instructors Handbook Phi 8083-4 Instrument Flying Handbook Phi 8083-15B Instrument Procedures Handbook Phi 8083-16 International Flight Information Management Dash 4 AMF Free Fall Personnel Parachute System Technical Manual Pilot Safety Brochures Pilots Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge Phi 8083-25A Plane Sense and Dash General Aviation Information Phi 8083-19A Risk Management Brochures Risk Management Handbook Phi 8083-2 Safety Risk Management Seaplane Skip Lane and Float Slash Ski Equipped Helicopter Operations Handbook Phi 8083-23 Student Pilot Guide Phi 8083-27A Tips on Mountain Flying Phi P8740-60 Weight Shift Control Aircraft Flying Handbook Phi 8083-5 Examiner and Inspector Flight Standards Information Management System SIMS Phi Order 8900.1 Design Year Management Handbook Guide for Aviation Medical Examiners General Aviation Airman Design Year Handbook Figure 2-18 Phi Handbooks and Manuals Airworthiness Limitations the eagle must contain a separate and clearly distinguishable section titled Airworthiness Limitations. Within this section are mandatory replacement times, structural inspection interval, and related inspection procedures. All of this is included in the initial release of documents when the aircraft is delivered. However, over the course of the life of an aircraft, various modifications can and often do occur. Whether these are as simple as a new cabin to galley sliding door, or as complex as a navigation-related STC, any major alteration requires that this type of maintenance data be provided to the owner, so that subsequent maintenance, inspection, and repair can be properly accomplished. As aircraft and their systems become more and more complex, and society continues its preoccupation with litigation for every incident, it is imperative that the technician have the right information, that it is current, and that he or she has the proper tools, including those required for any special inspection, and correct replacement parts. If any one of these items is required, and the technician is not of it accessible, he or she is in violation of 14 CFR sections 65.81b, 43.13a, and 43.16 if he or she attempts to return the aircraft to service. 2-37 Joint Aircraft Systems Component JASC slash A4A Code Table Aircraft Power Plant System 11 placards and markings 12 servicing 14 hardware 18 helicopter vibration 21 air conditioning 22 auto flight 23 communications 24 electrical power 25 equipment slash furnishings 26 fire protection 27 flight controls 28 fuel 29 hydraulic power 30 ice and rain protection 31 instruments 32 landing gear 33 lights 34 navigation airframe systems propeller slash rotor systems 35 oxygen, 36 pneumatic, 37 vacuum, 38 water slash waste, 45 central maintenance system, CMS, 49 airborne auxiliary power, 51 standard practices slash structures, 52 doors, 53 fuselage, 54 nacelles slash pylons, 55 stabilizers, 56 windows, 57 wings, 71 power plant, 72 turbine slash turboprop engine, 73 engine fuel and control, 74 ignition, 75 air, 76 engine control, 77 engine indicating, 78 engine exhaust, 79 engine oil, 80 starting, 81 top charging, 82 water injection, 83 accessory gearboxes, 85 reciprocating engine. 61 propellers slash propulses, 62 main rotor, 63 main rotor drive, 64 tail rotor, 65 tail rotor drive, 67 rotors flight control. Figure 2-19. Maintenance classification. Manufacturers may provide this required information in a variety of different manuals. Operating instructions, the airplane flight manual, of or the pilot's operating handbook, POH, provides the pilot with the necessary information to properly operate the aircraft. These manuals are usually listed in the aircraft TCDS, and therefore are a required item for the aircraft to be considered airworthy. Note that the OFN is generally serial number specific, whereas the POH is model specific. After 1978, the POHS generally took on both roles. Maintenance Manuals These manuals are often referred to as Aircraft Maintenance Manual, AM, or Component Maintenance Manual, CMM. The AM is focused on the entire aircraft and provides the big picture for the maintenance technician. It provides information concerning the maintenance, including troubleshooting and repair, of the aircraft and systems on the aircraft. The CMM, on the other hand, is focused on a specific item or component, such as hydraulic pump, generator, or thrust reverser. It provides the bench mechanic with detailed troubleshooting information and usually serves as an overhaul manual giving details for disassembly, cleaning, inspection, repair as necessary, reassembly, and testing in accordance with approved standards and technical data accepted by the administrator. Refer to 14 CFR Part 43 Section 43.2a. Eh? When maintenance is done according to the CMM, the technician must always include the appropriate references in the maintenance record entry required by 14 CFR Part 43 Section 43.9 or 43.11. Service bulletins, SB, throughout the life of a product, whether TC or not, manufacturing defects, changes in service, or design improvements often occur. When that happens, the OM frequently uses an SB to distribute the information to the operator of the aircraft. SBS are good information and should be strongly considered by the owner for implementation to the aircraft. However, SBS are not required unless they are referred to in an AD note or if compliance is required as a part of the authorized inspection program. Refer to Section 14 CFR Part 39, 39.27.
Structural Repair Manual, SRM, as the name implies, this manual carries detailed information for the technician concerning an aircraft's primary and secondary structure, criteria for evaluating the severity of the detected damage, determining the feasibility of a repair, and alignment slash inspection information. This manual is usually a separate manual for large aircraft. On small aircraft, this information is often included in the AM. 2-38 Forms Airworthiness Certificates In addition to the registration certificate that indicates the ownership of an aircraft, an airworthiness certificate indicates the airworthiness of the aircraft. At 21-12, Application for U.S. Airworthiness Certificate, FAR Form 8130-6, is a comprehensive guide for the completion of the application form for this certificate. There are two certificates, Standard and Special. FAR Form 8100-2, Standard Airworthiness Certificate, may be issued to allow operation of a TIPI certificated aircraft in one or more of the following categories. Figure 2-20, Normal, Utility, Acrobatic, Commuter, Transport, Man-Free Balloon, Special Classes. FAR Form 8130-7, Special Airworthiness Certificate, may be issued to authorize the operation of an aircraft in the following categories, Figure 2-21, Primary, Restricted, Multiple, Limited, Light Sport, Experimental, Special Flight Permit, Provisional. Airworthiness Certificates may be issued by either FAR personnel or FAR designees. Refer to 14 CFR Part 183, Sections 183.31 and 183.33. The certificate must not only be on board the aircraft, 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.203A1 but must also be displayed at the cabin or flight deck in France so that it is legible to the passengers or crew. 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.203b. Since the ability to obtain this certificate is based upon the requirement to inspect the aircraft to determine that it conforms to type design and is in condition for safe operation, it can also be revoked by the FAR if either of those two requirements ceases to exist. Aircraft Registration Aircraft must be registered in the United States if the aircraft is not registered under the laws of a foreign country and is owned by either a citizen of the United States, a foreign citizen lawfully admitted to the United States, or a corporation organized in and doing business under U.S. laws and primarily based in the United States. This registration is accomplished by using FAR Form 8050-1, Aircraft Registration, Application. The Aircraft Registration Form is available online at www.faa.gov. The aircraft owner can mail in completed copy, and keep a copy of the form as temporary authority to operate the aircraft after the fee and evidence of ownership have been mailed or delivered to the registry. When carried in the aircraft with an appropriate current airworthiness certificate or a special flight permit, a copy of this completed application provides authority to operate the aircraft in the United States for up to 90 days. In addition to the completed application form, the owner must also submit evidence of his or her ownership, such as a bill of sale and a registration fee. A successful review of the application results in the issuance of Act Form 8050-3, Certificate of Aircraft Registration. Note the Act Prefix. 14 CFR Section 91.203A2 requires that either the pink copy of the application or the actual certificate of registration be on board the aircraft during its operation. If the registration is ever lost or damaged, it may be replaced by contacting the FAR Aircraft Registration Branch and providing them with the aircraft-specific data, including make, model, N number, and serial number. A replacement certificate fee and an explanation of the reason for the replacement certificate are also required. Radio Station License A radio station license is required if the aircraft is equipped with radios and the aircraft is planned to be flown outside the boundaries of the United States. A radio station license is not required for aircraft that are operated domestically. A major change occurred on February 8, 1996, when the Telecommunications Act of 1996 was signed into law. The Federal Communications Commission, FCC, formally required that any communication transmitter installed in aircraft be licensed. These FCC licenses were valid for five years. This is not a FAR requirement. FAR inspectors who conducted ramp inspections and detected an expired radio station license were not required to notify the FCC, nor could they issue a violation to the owner slash operator. Simply informing the operator of the expired radio station license was their only responsibility. FSGA 96-06, a flight standards information bulletin, FSIB for general aviation, FSGA, titled Elimination of Aircraft Radio Station Licenses, became effective on July 8, 1996. 2-39, United States of America, Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration, One Nationality and Registration Marks, N12345, Standard Airworthiness Certificate, Two Manufacturer and Model, Boeing 787, Three Aircraft Serial Number, 43,219, Four Category, Transport, Five authority and basis for issuance. This airworthiness certificate is issued pursuant to 49 U.S.C. 44,704 and certifies that, as of the date of issuance, the aircraft to which issued has been inspected and found to conform to the type certificate, therefore, to be in condition for safe operation, and has been shown to meet the requirements of the applicable comprehensive and detailed airworthiness code as provided by Annex 8 to the Convention on International Civil Aviation, except is noted herein. Exceptions, none. Six terms and conditions. Unless sooner surrendered, suspended, revoked, or a termination date is otherwise established by the FAR, this airworthiness certificate is effective as long as the maintenance, preventative maintenance, and alterations are performed in accordance with Parts 21, 43, and 91 of the Federal Aviation Regulations, as appropriate, and the aircraft is registered in the United States. FAR Form 8100-204-11 supersedes previous edition. Date of issuance FAR Representative Designation Number. The 9th of January 2015 ER. White ER. White NEXX. Any iteration, reproduction, or misuse of this certificate may be punishable by a fine not exceeding $1,000 or imprisonment not exceeding three years or both. This certificate must be displayed in the aircraft in accordance with applicable Federal Aviation Regulations. Re 3 one
Sample file form 8102. Standard airworthiness certificate. New aircraft face side. Sample. Figure 2 20. File form 8102. Standard airworthiness certificate. Re 3 2. Sample file form 8102. Standard airworthiness certificate. Deassembled from spare and surplus products and articles. Face side. Then ground to field approval. Shown by completing and signing this area. In many cases, this block is blank because the technician has found, used, and mad. Six terms and conditions. Unless sooner surrendered, suspended, revoked, or a termination date is otherwise established by the FAR, this airworthiness certificate is effective as long as the maintenance, preventative maintenance, and alterations are performed in accordance with parts 21, 43, and 91 of the Federal Aviation Regulations, as appropriate, and the aircraft is registered in the United States. Date of issuance FAR representative designation number. The 9th of February 2015 EJ, Smith EJ, Smith XX. Any iteration, reproduction, or misuse of this certificate may be punishable by a fine not exceeding $1,000 or imprisonment not exceeding three years or both. This certificate must be displayed in the aircraft in accordance with applicable Federal Aviation Regulations. Although the FSIB had an effectivity of only one year, the elimination of the requirement for aircraft used only in domestic operations continues. FAR Form 337, Major Repair and Alteration. Refer to the current issue of Act 43.9-1, Instructions for Completion of FAR Form 337 for help completing FAR Form 337, Major Repair and Alteration, Airframe, Power Plant, Propeller, or Appliance. Figure 2-22, as the name clearly states, this form is to be used whenever major repairs or alterations are accomplished on an aircraft. The only exception would be that 14 CFR Part 43, Appendix B, allows for a certificate of repair to iron to RTS an aircraft after a major repair by using a signed and dated work order and a signed maintenance release. Information in Item 1 comes directly from the aircraft date plate, except for the tail number. That is to be compared to the aircraft registration form. Information in Item 2 reflects the name and address listed on Act Form 8053, Certificate of Registration. Item 3 is used when there is no existing G approved data for the IT did repair or alteration. In that case, the technician can request that the local FISDO Principal Maintenance Inspector may review the data and Reference to data already approved by the FAR. Item 4. If the repair or alteration is being done to the aircraft airframe, no entry is required since the data is identical to that in Item 1. However, if the repair or alteration is being done to an engine, a propeller, or other appliance, entries must include the appropriate make, model, and serial number information. Item 5 should have X marked in either the repair or the alteration column. Item 6. Enter appropriate data as specified and check the proper box in B. The technician is encouraged to carefully read the pre-printed statement in subparagraph D prior to signing this section. Item 7 must be completed by the EA or authorized individual from the repair station. Item 8 on the reverse side is for the description of the work accomplished. It must include a reference to the approved data used to conduct the required maintenance. United States of America. Department of Transportation Federal Aviation Administration. Standard Airworthiness Certificate. One nationality and two manufacturer and model three aircraft serial four category registration marks number. N54321 Jackson 47G-43191 HG normal. Five authority and basis for issuance. This airworthiness certificate is issued pursuant to 49 USC. 44,704 and certifies that, as of the date of issuance, the aircraft to which issued has been inspected and found to conform to the type certificate, therefore, to be in condition for safe operation, and has been shown to meet the requirements of the applicable comprehensive and detailed airworthiness code as provided by Annex 8 to the Convention on International Civil Aviation, except is noted herein. Exceptions, none. FAR Form 8102-04-11 supersedes previous edition. 2-40. Figure 4-1. Sample FAR Form 8130-7, Special Airworthiness Certificate. Front. United States of America Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration. Special Air within this certificate. Category slash designation A. Purpose, C flight. Dash. B manufacturer. Name address. From to. DN serial mode. Build and model. Date of issue and expiry operating limitations dated are part of this certificate. Signature of FAR representative designation or office mode. E. Sample. Any alteration, reproduction or misuse of this certificate may be punishable by a fine not exceeding $1,000 or imprisonment not exceeding three years, or both. This certificate must be displayed in the aircraft in accordance with applicable Title 14, Code of Federal Regulations, CFR. FAR Form 8130-704-11, previous edition 07-04 may be used until depleted C reverse side and SN, 0052-00-693-400. Back. But this airworthiness certificate is issued under the authority of Public Law 104-649 United States Code, USC 44704 and Title 14 Code of Federal Regulations, CFR. B. The airworthiness certificate authorizes the manufacturer named on the reverse side to conduct production flight tests, and only production flight tests, of aircraft registered in his name. No person may conduct production flight tests under this certificate, 1. Carrying persons or property for compensation or hire, and or 2. Carrying persons not essential to the purpose of the flight. C. This airworthiness certificate authorizes the flight specified on the reverse side for the purpose shown in Block A. This airworthiness certificate certifies that is of the date of issuance, the aircraft to which issued has been inspected and found to meet the requirements of the applicable CFR. The aircraft does not meet the requirements of the applicable comprehensive and detailed air within this code as provided by Annex 8 to D. The Convention on International Civil Aviation. No person may operate the aircraft described on the reverse side, 1. Except in accordance with the applicable CFR and in accordance with conditions and limitations which may be prescribed by the FAR as part of this certificate, 2. Over any foreign country without the special permission of that country. 
unless sooner surrendered, suspended, or revoked. This airworthiness certificate is effective for the duration and under the conditions prescribed in 14 CFR, Part 21, Section 21.181 or 21.217. Figure 2-21. FAR Form 8130-7, Special Air within this Certificate. The form must be completed at least in duplicate, with the records. Original provided to the owner slash operator and a copy to the local. Making maintenance record entries. It's no within 48 hours of completing the maintenance and Title 14 of the CFR Part 43, Sections 43.9 and 43.11 require RTS. If the FAR Form 337 is used to document additional the technician to make appropriate entries of maintenance fuel tanks in the cabin or cargo, then an additional copy actions or inspection results in the aircraft maintenance must be signed and in the aircraft at all times. Maintenance record. How long those records must be kept is defined in facilities and mechanics are encouraged to make a copy for 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.417. Their own records. 2-41. And no. 2120-0020. X. 5-31-2018. Electronic tracking number. Major repair and alteration U.S. Department of Transportation, Airframe, Power Plant, Propeller, or Appliance, Federal Aviation Administration. For far use only. 1. Aircraft. Nationality and registration mark serial no. Make model series. 2. Owner. Address city state zip country. 3. For far use only. 4. Type 5. Unit identification. Repair alteration unit make model serial no. Airframe as described in item 1 above. Power plant. Propeller. Type. Appliance. Manufacturer. 6. Conformity statement. Name as shown on registration certificate. Address as shown on registration certificate. Sample. A. Agency S. Name and address B. Kind of agency. Name address city state. Zip country. U. S. Certificated Mechanic Manufacturer Foreign Certificated Mechanic C. Certificate No. Certificated Repair Station Certificated Maintenance Organization. D. Signature Slash Date of Authorized Individual. Instructions, Print or Type All Entries. C. Title 14 CFR Paragraph 43.9, Part 43 Appendix B, and Act 43.9-1 or subsequent revision thereof for instructions and disposition of this form. This report is required by Law 49 USC. Paragraph 44701. Failure to report can result in a civil penalty for each such violation. 49 USC. Paragraph 46301, a single quote. I certify that the repair and or alteration made to the unit S identified in item 5 above and described on the reverse or attachments here to have been made in accordance with the requirements of part 43 of the U.S. Federal Aviation Regulations and that the information furnished herein is true and correct to the best of my knowledge. Extended range fuel per 14 CFR part 43, app, b, 7, approval for return to service. Assuant to the authority given persons specified below, the unit identified in item 5 was inspected in the manner prescribed by the administrator of the Federal Aviation Administration and is approved rejected. 5LT. Standards Inspector. Manufacturer Maintenance Organization. Persons approved by Canadian Department of Transport. By. Other. Specify. Far design near repair station inspection authorization. Certificate or designation no. Signature slash date of authorized individual. Far form 337-10-06, figure 2-22. Far form 337, major repair and alteration. 2-42. Notice. Weight and balance or operating limitation changes shall be entered in the appropriate aircraft record. An alteration must be compatible with all previous alterations to assure continued conformity with the applicable air within this requirements. 8. Description of work accomplished. If more space is required, attach additional sheets. Identify with aircraft nationality and registration mark and date work completed. Nationality and registration and mark date. Sample. Additional sheets are attached. FAR Form 337-10-06, Figure 2-22. FAR Form 337, Major Repair and Alteration, Continued. 2-43. Whenever maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, or alteration work occurs on an aircraft, airframe, aircraft engine, propeller, appliance, or component part, a maintenance record entry must be created. The importance of compliance with this requirement cannot be overemphasized. Complete and organized maintenance logs for an aircraft can have significant and usually positive effect during the buy-slash-sell negotiations of an aircraft. On the other hand, poorly organized and incomplete logs can have a detrimental effect upon the selling price of an aircraft. Temporary records, 14 CFR Part 91 Section 91.417 A1 and B1. These are records that must be kept by the owner until the work is repeated, superseded, or one year has transpired since the work was performed. These are typically records referring to maintenance, preventive maintenance, alteration, and all inspections. They include a description of the work performed or reference to the FAR accepted data, the date of completion, and the name, signature and certificate number of the person doing the RTS. Permanent records, 14 CFR Part 91, Section 91.417 A2 and B2. These records must be retained by the owner during the time he or she operates the aircraft. They are transferred with the aircraft at the time of sale. Typically, these are documents relating to total time in service, current status of life limited parts, time since last overhaul, current inspection status, current status of applicable AD notes, and major alteration forms as required by 14 CFR Part 43, Section 43.9. Electronic records. During the last 25 years, the field of aviation maintenance has seen a significant change in the documentation requirements for aircraft and related parts. Nowhere is that change seen as revolutionary as the introduction of electronic data and record retention. 
Just as the arrival of the personal computer placed the possibility of the power and versatility of a computer in the hands of the average person, it made it available to the maintenance technician. Initially some technicians developed their own programs for listing data, DCDS, AD notes, and so forth, but soon commercially available programs were developed. Basically, these were developed by either one of the following two groups. 1. Computer literate persons who felt the aviation industry could benefit from the computer. 2. Aviation professionals who felt the aviation industry must benefit from the computer. Some of those initial programs were either not very user-friendly if developed by computer wizards or not. Very sophisticated if developed by the maintenance technician. Today, there is a mixture of these various database programs. A review of the advertisement section in any current aviation maintenance magazine offers the reader numerous options for electronic maintenance records. Many of these programs offer a combination of the data research, such as ADS, SBS, SDCS, and DCDSS, required to conduct proper maintenance, inspections, and data recording, logbook entries, AD compliance history, length of component time in service, and so forth, desired to improve the efficiency of the technician. Although some large shops and certified repair stations may have a separate group of people responsible for records and research, the professional maintenance technician must be aware of the benefits of these systems. Some factors to consider when reviewing a system are what is the typical size of the aircraft that maintenance is being done on? That is, less than 12,500 pounds, more than 12,000. Mixed. Does the program have built-in templates for the aircraft being worked on? What FAR forms, if any, are available in the program? Does it have a user-friendly template to enter the data for the form, or must data be directly entered onto the form? Can it calculate weight and balance data? Does it have adequate word search capabilities? Is it networkable? Are the updates sent via US mail or downloaded from the internet? What is the maximum number of aircraft that the system can handle? Can the system handle both single and multi-engine aircraft? Fixed and rotary wing? Piston and jet? Can an item removed from an aircraft be tracked? Is the data from this system exportable to other electronic formats? Can it forecast items due for maintenance or inspection? Since no program can be considered the best, the technician must learn all he or she can about the numerous systems that exist. Exposure to the pros and cons of these different systems can be one of the benefits of attending various trade shows, maintenance seminars, or year renewal sessions. Continuous learning and personal improvement is the goal of every professional maintenance technician. 2-44 Light Sport Aircraft Nusa Maintenance The Light Sport Aircraft Nusa category includes gliders, airplanes, gyroplanes, powered parachutes, weight shift and lighter than air aircraft. There are two general types of Nusas, Special Nusa and Experimental Elsa. The Nusa are factory built and Isla kit built. This new category of aircraft was added to the regulations in 2004. Refer to 14 CFR sections 21.190, 65.107 and 91.327 all dated July 27, 2004. Just as industry standard specifications have replaced many other military standards to define products that are destined to be part of the Department of Defense DOD inventory, so too have industry standards come into the far sites for documenting certain information. Quality is one example. The Society of Automotive Engineers SA has developed as 9100 and as 9110 as auditing standards for aerospace facilities and specifically repair stations. Likewise, ISO 9001 is being adopted by the FAR as a system of measuring their performance. Therefore, it was logical that when the FAR looked to develop the standards for this newest category of aircraft, they again looked to industry, and this time it was the American Society for Testing and Materials, ASTM. The ASTM developed a comprehensive list of consensus standards for use by manufacturers, regulators, maintenance facilities, owners, and service providers. It is unique that these standards are the first ones in over 100 years to solely address the issue of recreational aircraft use. It is also the first complete set of industry consensus standards covering the design, manufacture, and use of recreational aircraft that was developed by a non-government agency. The ASTM committee that developed these ILSA standards did so to ensure the quality of products and services to support both the national and the international regulatory structures forces. Over 20 standards have been generated, and more are being developed to cover this diversity of aircraft. This text only incorporates a review of F2483-05, Standard Practice for Maintenance, and the Development of Maintenance Manuals for Light Support Aircraft, ILSA, a six-page document comprised of the following 12 sections. 1. Scope. 2. Reference Documents. 3. Terminology. 4. Significance and Use. 5. Aircraft Maintenance Manual. 6. Line maintenance, repairs, and alterations. 7. Heavy maintenance, repairs, and alterations. 8. Overhaul. 9. Major repairs and alterations. 10. Task specific training. 11. Safety directives. 12. Key words. The scope of that document is basically twofold to provide guidelines for the qualification necessary to accomplish various levels of maintenance on USA, to provide the content and structure of maintenance manuals for aircraft and their components that are operated as USAs. Some additional definitions from Section 3, Terminology, that help to better explain those the concepts are Annual Condition Inspection, defined as a detailed inspection accomplished once a year in accordance with instructions provided in the maintenance manual supplied with ULSA. The purpose of this inspection is to look for any wear, corrosion, or damage that would cause ULSA not to be in condition for safe operation. Heavy maintenance, any maintenance, inspection, repair, or alteration of manufacturer has designated that requires specialized training, equipment, or facilities. Line maintenance, any repair, maintenance, scheduled checks, servicing, inspections, or alterations not considered heavy maintenance that are approved by the manufacturer and is specified in the manufacturer's maintenance manual. ULSA Repairman and Dash Inspection, U.S. FAR certified ULSA Repairman with an inspection rating per 14 CFR Part 65. This person is authorized to perform the 100-hour-slash-annual inspection of the aircraft that he or she owns. 
The Sir Repairman Dash Maintenance, US. Are certified Sir Repairman with a maintenance rating per 14 CFR Part 65. This person is allowed to perform the required maintenance and can also accomplish the 100 hour slash annual inspection. Major repair, alteration, or maintenance, any repair, alteration, or maintenance where instructions to complete the task are excluded from the maintenance manual. Minor repair, alteration, or maintenance, any repair, alteration, or maintenance where instructions to complete the task are included in the maintenance manual. 2-45 The 100-hour inspection is the same as the annual inspection, except for the interval of time. The requirements for whether or not the 100-hour inspection is applicable are exactly the same as the criteria for the standard 100-hour slash annual required of non aircraft. Aircraft Maintenance Manual, AM, although these manuals do not require any FAR approval, the regulations do require that the manual be developed in accordance with industry standards. This system sets that standard by requiring general specifications to be listed, include capacities, servicing, lubrication, and ground handling, an inspection checklist for the annual condition or 100-hour inspection, a description of and the instructions for the maintenance, repair, and overhaul of the SR engine, a description of and the instructions for the maintenance, repair, and alteration of the aircraft's primary structure. Other items that maintenance procedures must be provided for are fuel systems, Propeller. Utility system. Instruments and avionics. Electrical system. Structural repair. Painting and coatings. The inspection, repair, and alteration section must specifically list any special tools and parts needed to complete the task, as well as the type of maintenance action, line, heavy, or overhaul necessary to accomplish the activity. Directly associated with that information is the requirement to specify the level of certification needed to do the job, that is, the repairman, A&P, or repair station. The manual may refer to existing FARCs. Line maintenance, repairs, and alterations. The minimum level of certification necessary to accomplish line maintenance is also inspection. Some typical tasks considered to be line maintenance are 100 hour slash annual condition inspection, servicing of fluids, removing and replacing components when instructions to do so are provided in the maintenance manual, batteries, fuel pump, exhaust, spark plugs and wires, floats and skis, repair or alteration of components when specific instructions are provided in the maintenance manual, patching a hole in the fabric, installation of a strobe light kit, Heavy maintenance, repairs, and alterations must be accomplished by either a certified mechanic, AOP or ANP, or an officer repairman, maintenance who has received additional task-specific training. Some examples of this would be the removal and replacement of complete engine, cylinder, piston and valve assemblies, primary flight controls, and landing gear. Heavy repair of components or structure can be accomplished when instructions are provided in the maintenance manual or other service-directed instructions. A few examples of this activity are repainting of control surfaces, structural repairs, recovering of an open fabric, Heavy alterations of components can be accomplished when instructions are provided in the maintenance manual or other service-directed instructions. Examples of this activity are initial installation of skis and installation of new additional pivot static instruments. Overhaul of components can be performed only by the manufacturer or someone authorized to perform or they'll say all the component to be overhauled. An overhaul manual is required and must be a separate manual from the manufacturer's maintenance manual. Items typically considered for overhaul are engines, carburetors, starters, generators, alternators, and instruments. Major repairs and alterations. Another major difference between water maintenance and traditional aircraft maintenance is that FAR Form 337, Major Repair and Alteration, is not required to document major repairs and alterations. Instead, any major repair or alteration that is accomplished after the water has gone through production acceptance testing must be evaluated relative to the applicable estimate requirements. After this evaluation has been accomplished either by the manufacturer, 2-46, or an entity approved by them, a written affidavit must be provided attesting that the water still meets the requirements of the applicable estimates. The manufacturer or other approved entity must provide written instructions defining the level of certification necessary to perform the maintenance and also include any ground test or flight testing necessary to verify that also complies with the original SIR acceptance test standards and is in condition for safe operation. Proper documentation of this maintenance activity is required to be entered in also records and is also defined by the manufacturer. Task-specific training is not required to be far approved. This is solely the responsibility of the manufacturer. Some examples of this are an engine manufacturer's overhaul school or the ASP Porter fabric covering school. Safety directives are issued against an or component and are not issued by the FAR, but rather by the original aircraft manufacturer. Note, if the includes a product that is TC by the FAR, the manufacturer is required to issue a safety directive. Typical instructions within a safety directive include List of tools required for the task List of parts needed Type of maintenance, line, heavy, overhaul, level of certification needed Detailed instructions and diagrams Inspection and test methods Safety directives are mandatory, except for experimental uses. 2-47 2-48 Chat forms.